Block 4. Fine. I said I am not talking to you. Everybody ignored her and just headed to the firing position. While we were setting up, the others dragged the noisy girl away. Everybody, report readiness. Iowa is ready. New Jersey is ready. NJ, Missouri is ready. Mo, Wisconsin is ready. We prepare the guns. All 36 guns started loading. Iowa, guns up. New Jersey, guns up. NJ, Missouri, ready to rock. Mo, Wisconsin, guns up. We firing. Boom 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 the ground shook as the 16 guns fired. This salvo is dedicated to Whiskey's yellow striped. NJ, boom 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 just die already. You pervert. We boom 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 and then silence. I looked at Missouri, and wished to disappear. Oh, great fire, grant me your strength, or whatever was there. Listen to me, and obey my command, for I am the greatest of all. Heed my will, the will of the great demon of fire, and approach the era of extinction, hellfire. And here she goes. She already worn her eye patch, and grabbed her staff with LED tip. Boom 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 Iowa, finished firing. New Jersey, finished firing. NJ, Missouri, finished firing. Mo, Wisconsin, finished firing. We all right, girls. New Jersey and Whiskey as always hit the mark. And please, stop pinching her cheeks. And poking them too. Missouri, please, I beg you. Don't do this again. Or at least pretend to listen. After the debriefing was over. We continued pounding the area. V3CH15. Close contacts after the ship at the bottom. I sailed closer. There were no survivors. And even if there were, they all were sucked in by the sinking ship. I dedicated the poor souls one minute of silence, and returned to the course. There were some minor things, like dolphins and birds. But nothing major happened in the next hours until we left the densest archipelago area. Occasionally I was noticing the islands on our way. All of them were uninhabited. What do you think? I asked Veronica. The pirates would settle in the places where nobody would search for them. The archipelagos and their coves are the best places for this. It is hard to search all of the islands, or at least to do so unnoticed. V, that port you mentioned. Will it be a good starting point? It will. Our actual destination was not a dot on the map but a secluded semi-independent port. All kinds of scum pass through it. Everybody knows about that place but nobody interferes. We continued this chit-chat, mostly just to pass the time. As the night approached I felt re-energized. You really are a cat, aren't you? Veronica yawned. Perhaps. You foo-foo Tilda. I really do love cat Stilda. She started petting me and scratching my chin. Per just thinking that I hold a cold-blooded murderer like a pet makes me feel so weird, in a good way. She hugged me, and pushed me in her chest. I couldn't help but cosplay a cat, and start pawing her. Per oh my, who would have thought this little black kitten is a little pervert Tilda? She whispered in my ear. I feigned ignorance. What do you mean? Don't be shy, touch them if you want. You can't hide this play from a cat person apostrophe Tilda. I could only stop, before she is disgusted by my actions. Wow, I hoped she would. V, what? I asked, nothing. Veronica smiled, she headed to the bed, while I remained on the bridge, until the morning. Good morning, how is the weather? V, everything is fine. Nothing to be concerned about. Just when I said that, I saw a couple of ships sailing from an island. Contact, 4,700 meters. Give me this scope. You, those are not pirates, just a couple of smugglers. Can I ask you to bring us closer? V, rudder to starboard, half speed ahead. Just what are you mumbling? Can't you be a bit simpler? V, I can but. I want to show off. She is cute, so, or Tilda. Then it changes everything. My knight in shining armor Tilda. Literally shining. I should say. 
she knocked the metal walls of the bridge. As we approached the smugglers, they opened fire. Just a couple of cannons per side. Their shots did not even reach us. IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 16. Torpedoes, 16. HP, 3700. High minus 99.9%. Damage control compensation minus 0.01%. AU minus 63%. 1891 nanometers 3 single turret increase caliber 0200 dual gun turrets 0400 14 dual torpedo mount compressed air increase caliber 0100 improved mounts 0250 improved propulsion 0500 now i felt the power instead of pitiful 57 millimeters I now have 76 mm guns, enough to cause some actual damage. Bang 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 as always my ranging shots missed, and I found an actually bad side effect. Slow reload. Bang 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 I couldn't farm hits as well as previously, since after the next salvo I had the poor ship list. Bang 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 just in case, I fired another salvo, and, the ship started rapidly capsizing. What? Is going. On? V. I have the same question. Don't play a fool on me, those shots are too powerful. V. Well, it's just a minor improvement. She said nothing. And just stared in shock. Bang 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 I fired at the other ship, that was trying to flee. A couple of hits made them understand that I am not going to stop at this much. And they turned. Our courses intersected. And then I had an idea. If they are bandits, would it not be better to capture them? Got it. I will bore them. When they pass by. Before I could answer, she rushed out to the deck, and prepared. The contact was successful. The wooden hull of the clipper was slightly damaged by the glancing hit, while my hull suffered nothing. Not a single percent of the integrity. Ding you received one copper coin. 92 upgrade points IJN Kirin Army. DDL upgrade points 108 torpedoes 16 HP 3622 high minus 99.9% damage control compensation minus 0.01% AU minus 63% 1884 nanometers I take my thoughts back with every second the smuggler ship was further and further away. Before I could react, I saw another ship on approach. It was a battleship with black sails. Four sisters no seven. I approached the door and knocked. Who's there? My little sister had no idea who is waiting for her. Uh. We I approached the door even closer. And. My sweet little sister. I am here Tilda. You? Get out of here. I did not call for you. Also. You are late, so I don't want to see you. Wait, don't you want to hang out with me Tilda? While she was defenseless, I opened the door. As always, she opens the lock when she approaches the door. You, stay away from me. She started shaking her arms. But I just want to hang out with you Tilda. She immediately put her hands on the skirt to protect what's below. So, how about you go with me, and help with one little thing. Without saying a word, she walked past me, and headed outside. Stay close to me. We must not be seen. We sneaked to the target, the dormitory where live the newcomers. Follow me. I crawled to the nearest bush and laid in ambush. Hey, freak, are you an idiot? She stood near me. Come on, hide. I clapped the ground near me. Why should I? I am not such an idiot so as to creep the entire way from the dormitories on my belly. And I am not such an idiot so as to do it. Despite the shocked gazes of the people, who saw you creep through the pathway. I was hurt by her infidelity to our cause. It's fun. Come and join me. You're like a cockroach. Whiskey looked at me with disgust. Fine. What is your plan? We, we will wait until the newcomers come out, and then you will approach and flip their skirts. Stomp, stomp, stomp you're even more disgusting than a cockroach. 
she stepped on my head but it allowed me catch a glimpse of patriotism. Today's are the Union flag. God, bless the Union. You, don't you tell me. We stomp, stomp, stomp just die already, you freaking cockroach. We shh, they're coming. Whiskey immediately squatted. God, bless the Union. Why can't you just use yourself for the salvos? We if only it was this simple. After all, my dedicated salvos don't work with me being the subject. Still, our little talk allowed me to inspect the more interesting side of my little sis. Just where are your eyes? You. Luckily her skirt was too short for that. Regretfully, she was not happy about it. Stomp, stomp, stomp you are the most disgusting thing in the universe. The newcomers came out of the dormitory. In short skirts. Question mark Whiskey looked at me in confusion. After all she was focused on me. Not at the entrance. Go, and execute the plan. Pervert. Freak. Cockroach. She stomped away. Despite her grumbling, she approached the newcomers and started talking to them. I started praying for a wind. Of course, no blows came, and I had to work out everything. I crawled out of the hiding, and made my way to the girls. What is she doing? The girl that was hiding behind a blonde looked at me. I have no idea who she is, so let's pretend to ignore her. I felt a stab to my heart. Is she not one of your bunch? The girl still was looking at me. She is not. I have no idea who she is. Stab too. Just to avoid attracting suspicion. I squatted and approached their bacon. Their gazes felt suffocating and Whiskey's glare of disgust was hurting me even more. Still, it is for the greater good of mankind. Kaya. Die. You pervert. Boom boom bang bang bum four sisters no eight. I was supposed to start writing the actual chapters but the hashtag gif doesn't like to ease our lives. More paperwork, less time. It was another good day in the academy. I was reading a novel, and enjoying the weekends. There was no pressuring homework, no assignments, no academy-wide voluntary work, and no need for me to be worried. I finally could dedicate my time to reading, and feel no need to be concerned with the troubles of the world. The pages were consuming me. As I was consuming them, I finally entered the zen of reading. How wrong I was to leave the door open. Heavy metal noises rock noises unknown music style noises I was dragged into my sister's another weird idea. A barbecue festival. What's up? Whiskey? Are you not going to play? Missouri put a guitar by my side. I'm not in the mood. Clemen. Let's party hard till we all fall breathless. She started pulling me to their improvised stage. I felt like I will die if I approach their cacophony even closer. However, if they want me to attend that much, blues melody holy metal, whiskey is rocking the stage tilde. Just when I finally caught up to the rhythm, my neck was hugged by the freak. Can you, like, stay a few thousand feet away from me? Or tilde, who's starting to be thorny. I couldn't help hitting her with my elbow. You two, stop playing around. Music, give me music. Big Sis Iowa approached the stage. She was wearing an apron. Big Sis, are you cooking? Yes Tilda, do you want a specific meal? Whiskey? She flourished when I asked her. W well. Beef, give her a huge beef steak. Before the freak could continue, I hit her again. I, I T think. Yeah, beef is all we've got. NJ. I don't want a huge steak. Can Big Sis make me a. a small bit. S. The disheartened posture of Iowa changed immediately. Of course, leave it to me. And she hurried back to the grills. I continued playing the guitar. As the music and the grilled meat fragrance spread out across the area, more and more people approached. Our little scene even had its first fans. Just look at her. And just an hour ago she was all stubborn about playing. NJ. Yeah. It was a good idea to push her into the corner. Mo. I wonder what she wears today. NJ. I tease none of your business. Before the talk continued in a weird direction, I shouted at them. Are they blue? NJ. 
Why 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 why? Wow, you hit the mark. Missouri patted her. You? Before I could strangle the freak, Iowa returned with a plate of meat. Wisconsin, your bits are ready Tilda. Yeah, thank you. Big sis, you are the best. I guess I know why Jerksy fools around with me. If I was to make such a face, I... I guess they all would love it. As I stretched out my hands to accept the plate, my hands grabbed the air. R? Whiskey, come here Tilda. Big Sis New Jersey will feed you Tilda. The freak was holding the plate and picked one piece of meat with a fork. Come here and say triple underscore. NJ, why would I? I'd rather. No, I'd rather not stay with her. Don't you want this delicious meat Tilda? NJ, no, I don't want it or Tilda. What a pity Tilda. N.J. Chomp. M.M.M. Tilda. I, your meat is the best. You're missing so much, Whiskey. You, M.M.M. Tilda. So juicy, so tasty Tilda. You, ah, if only I could share this delicious meat with my little sisters. Hey, Mo, how about? Screw it. Fine. I approached her and opened my mouth. Say triple underscore a apostrophe tilde. NJ, you jerksy. Uh, uh, even though I released New Jersey, I will pretend they did not. I am surely not spending Brazilian coins to get her. V3CH16. The mice and the cat I steered the rudder as hard as I could. The ship started turning faster and faster, until the ship started moving sideways. I almost came to a full stop while the battleship was approaching rapidly. I set full ahead and started retreating. This is not a fight I can start unprepared. The battleship changed the sail's angle and followed me. While the boilers were still heating, and the ship was accelerating, the battleship continued approaching. Splash I launched the last torpedo with a slight hope of giving myself time. The torpedo did not start, which left me in an awkward position. Due to its high speed, the Black Sail battleship was closer and closer, and the wind favored it. By the time I started accelerating and outrunning it, they already had their guns aimed at me. Boom boom two shots landed right in front of the bow. I felt like they shall not let me run away. I holstered several signal flags, and reduced speed. The battleship approached me on the move, until it closed to 10 meters from me. Its hull was as long as mine but its side was on the level of my main superstructure. Its side was covered in portals with cannons barrels sticking out. On top of its deck were standing a number of people in bitty clothes. Each one aimed a rifle at me. Ship. Then, somebody jumped from the battleship, and landed on my deck. It was a figure in a cloak. I exited the bridge, and walked out to the figure. I stood in a stance. Ping in a second our swords clashed. We stood like that for a couple of seconds, which felt like eternity. You are not bad. The voice was feminine. Welcome, can your friends stop aiming at me? The figure waved to the battleship, and the people raised their rifles. I don't like it when somebody sinks good people. The figure removed the hood. I saw a brunette female with short hair. Shots were fired. They brought it on themselves. Why would you even approach? Won't it be easier for this nimble girl to just avoid an engagement? The girl was glaring at me. I am a free captain, who sails freely. They were on my way, and they attacked me. I decided to try being cheeky. Then you're going to answer for it, are you not? She grabbed the hilt of her sheathed sword. Not going to. If you have any trouble with it, then let us sink each other for this stupid reason. I shrugged my shoulders and made a poker face. Ha ha ha. Now we're talking, just what storm brought you here? For no reason, she patted my shoulder and hugged me from a side. Well, we can have a little chat before the showdown. I did the same, and like that two interlinked girls headed inside. Just like that I ended up here. I told my story with a bit of censorship about Veronica and meeting the doge. Wow, you're quite a corsaur. Not bad. She was much more amiable. Now it's your turn. No, problem. Freebooter, started since. What was it? Four years. Now, 
an independent captain of a small bunch of friends. What a detailed story. We have a candidate for Pulitzer Prize. Great, you are a pirate. Good for you. Got any problem with that? She clenched her fists. Who am I to judge you? I was just drifting anyway. What do you mean? She showed some interest. Since that ship was sunk I had nothing to do. Well it's just me talking. We had a chat, so let's finally sail our own ways. No way. I can't let you go. Can I? She was just sitting, so I guess she waits for something. Then fight it is. Just why are you so focused on fighting? She exploded, so I felt like it's the time. Then what? She gulped, and was clearly lost. So? I hurried her to make an impulsive decision. No idea where from I had the confidence that it will work. You know what? Follow us. It would be disgraceful to abandon a fellow captain. She showed me to the exit, and if I remind you that this is my ship? S still, let's go. I led her to the bridge, and I thought, please, let her be caught on my nonsense, and let her lead me to the pirate hideout. After she gestured something to the battleship, they started changing the course and I followed them, four sisters no nine, it was another sunny day, so I went outside to the pool, if I was not busy, then she might already be there, some of the passing students were exchanging greeting with me, all of them were in the academy uniform, and most of them were from noble families, while the concept of nobility is a bit wild to us, the union stands for freedom and everything, the people here are all nice, there were some cases of bullying but after Big Sis was asked to stop them, the bullies became exemplary students. They just needed a few hundred private lessons out of all people at the alley. Only one was standing out, a short-haired girl in a hoodie with a portative console in her hands. She was sitting on a bench below a tree, perfectly covered from the sunlight. Hi Tilda, how's it going? I approached the dragon. Hi taking a stroll? She glanced at me. Something like that. What are you playing? If only I knew. Ah, this? This is. And the MC is so. I also like this one. And this girl is my waifu. She's terrible. I don't recommend her route. Also you can start with her. Her route is. Then you need to choose this option too. And her tits are S rank. I knew one thing. If I need to shut up New Jersey. I must. Her size is not bad. I threw a couple of meaningful glances at New Jersey's. Don't cut where it hurts. Come on, not everybody is born with a couple of watermelons. NJ. Poke she poked my bosom with a finger. It sunk right in. It was a bit ticklish but the dragon's face was distorted immediately. I don't like to hurt my sisters for no reason. Hey, Mo, I am not flat, right? I patted her shoulder. W well, I at least have something. She was now as vigorous as ever. Come on, push your finger in em. She proudly stuck out her chest. Poke this ain't a bone. This is surely not a bone, right? Hey, Mo, answer me. I could only hug her, while she cries out her pain and suffering in this cruel world. Fine. I might not be a F material but at least I have a centimeter there. Also, I am. NJ, a pervert. Whiskey was whining that you once again flipped her skirt. I just wonder why you are doing this only to her? Come on, Mo. You would burn everything with nuclear fire. I would start crying, and I myself am not suitable. She has a point. Well, I guess that's it. Time to. Where do you think you're going? You hurt me. So now you owe me. You ain't going anywhere. Until you finish at least. 1. Root Tilda. She stretched out the console, for Christ's sake, New Jersey. You know I don't play those dating sims. You'll never know until you try them Tilda. She pulled me to the bench and pushed my shoulder down with her elbow. You foo foo Tilda. You're not going to slip away from me Tilda. NJ. I spent the rest of the day playing with her, and in the end I did not like this game in any way. 1 colon 0, 
NG V3CH17 Anchorage I expected a long journey towards an unknown pirate base but before I could have a normal chat with the girl, we approached a group of ships, entering port, neutral refuel and repair, one gold one next torpedo, one gold for a second I was confused by the message. I finally understood that I can only resupply in a proper port, so I spent my only gold coin to buy myself the refueling. I could only wonder how lucky I was to end up passing by a pirate base, despite it being unlikely to appear here. Veronica's intel was wrong. We sailed past the ships and approached a small harbor with wooden huts nearby. It was not even a temporary port. It was just a makeshift something in the middle of nowhere. You guys are quite rich. Not funny, you know? We aren't Benizio, we can fight only with what we have. The girl headed to the deck, I followed her. Both of the ships stopped by a long pier and the battleship sailors started docking. I felt this is too much trouble for me, so I just dropped the anchors. Hey, where are the sailors? By this time they should already be out on the deck and dragging the ropes. The girl glanced at me. Well, this is magical ship, so it doesn't require people. In response to my words she smiled. Oh, wow, you have a magical ship? So great, I wish we had one. She continued smiling. You must be quite great to have such a ship. Do I really look like an imbecile who would believe this bulls? If you don't want to be fed to the sharks, you better start talking. In a moment she exploded and pointed her sword at me. I was not startled and started explaining. I did not lie. If you know what ships there are around, you would understand that I am the last person to have common sense. Fine, I'll believe that you are not lying, but don't expect me to stay silent in case. She abruptly stopped talking and looked at the pier. I took a look as well. There were a couple of people, in purple coats. The same coats as Benetian soldiers. You sold me? I drew the katana. Mostly, it was for the show. After all the pirates would lose no less than I would. Wait, wait. Listen. They aren't from the government. They deserted. I continued glaring. F. Guys. Tell me fast to what you need. Before our newcomer causes us trouble. She shouted at the people. Lady Alba required your presence. Also. She mentioned to bring anyone who comes with you. The people did a slight bow and headed to the shore. Ha, huh? why is this getting so complicated? R, wait. If this is a magic ship, then how are you planning to dock? The girls started running around and searching for something. I just dropped the anchors. You did what? Listen, pal, you better tie the ship. The currents here are strong and the ship will be dangling around till it hits something. Better tie her to the pier. I looked around the ship, and saw that I am in trouble. There are no ropes. Well, tie yourself to the pier. It was just a stupid attempt but the ship indeed started docking. Both the girl and I stood stupefied. Guess you really told the truth. I could only nod to her remark. After we disembarked she led me to one of the huts. At the entrance stood several purple coats. Her ladyship is waiting. They bowed and the girl opened the door. Inside of the room were several shelves, with jewelry, and a couple of worn out dresses on old mannequins. In the corner was sitting a middle aged woman. When we entered, the woman glanced at us. You there, come closer. She pointed at me. I approached, and the woman picked up a candle from a small table. She examined me, before returning to her chair. Just where did you pick this beast? A. Eh? We found her after she sunk one of the smugglers. The girl leaned on a wall, as expected. The woman muttered. I believe we are not yet acquainted. I am Kirin Army, a free captain, sailing wherever I end up at. Wonderful. If you are such a free-spirited person, then you would be no doubt beneficial to our cause. I am Albert Medici, and this is my daughter, Patricia. Now that we are acquainted, let us put you to use. Are you willing to help the same free-spirited people in their good deeds? The woman drilled me with her sight. I'm in. Good, then let us discuss the details. Patricia, dear, 
Go bring us some drinks. Our new comrade will no doubt like the wine. Patricia nodded and exited the hut. I looked at Alba and waited for my assignment. Tell me, beast, what is your game? Four sisters no ten. Today I was asked to help the gardening club. The girls there were having trouble with the amount of plants they planted. Since I am reliable big sister, I could not refuse them. I was the only one who did not refuse. T this shows that I am reliable. I approached the garden and knocked. Is there anybody in here? Yes. At least somebody responded. That's a good sign. The gate opened. And a girl peeked out. W. What do you need? It was the platinum blonde that was arguing with Missouri. He hello, I was asked to help with the garden. The girl looked at me and pondered. You are not welcome here but you can help with the plants. I can clean the room by myself but since you are here, help me out. I giggled and headed inside. The plants were suffocated by the weeds, and surely required a lot of watering. Even I understood it. I started tearing out the weeds. After an hour of work, I understood why everybody found an excuse not to work here. The girls here overestimated themselves, and underestimated the amount of work required. I approached the blonde. L listen, H how many M members does your club have? She looked at me, then slowly averted her eyes. Guessed so. I it's not what you think. My pawn is also in the club but she has to study, since she is not as genius as I am. I, I am not by myself. New Jersey is lurking somewhere. She must be too busy today, so I am. I, I am not alone. Hey, don't you dare giving me this look of empathy. I don't need a commoner's sympathy. What are you looking at? I am not missing her. S. She is too noisy and I don't want to play with her. C. Completely don't want to. One moment. This girl needs the rescue team. Hello, Mo. Can you help me with? Hey, Jay. How about you help me out? While well, your room is at Wisconsin. How are you? Listen, I need your help. In five minutes the squad was standing right outside the garden. The blonde girl and Mo started hissing at each other immediately, while the other two were busy playing. Girls, let's start working. Shall we? No reaction. Mo, come with me. I dragged her inside. After she was put to work, I dragged New Jersey by her collar. Come on, I. I want to. NJ, work with me. I mean. NJ, work with me. But whiskey. NJ, work with me. Yes, boss. NJ, the five of us finished the work by the lunchtime. Phew. That was epic. I melted in a chair. Good work, big sis. Missouri started petting my head. This is not how you treat big sister. Now that we are done, I'm gonna return. New Jersey already prepared to run away. Will it kill you to stay for a couple of minutes? Those drawn girls will not disappear if you stay away from the monitor. We wow. Is it one of those rare moments when my cute little sister clings to me Tilda? She turned 180 and tried to hug Wisconsin. Bang with predictable consequences. Stay away from me, you freak. With sigh I drank some cold tea. Are you guys always like this? Blonde. Not do you have it hard. Blonde. Not just another normal day when the four of us gather together. V3CH18. Private here and her seagulls. The question confused me but I quickly gave my answer. I am just trying to. Don't pretend. Alba immediately stopped me. Pretend? You know what I mean. That man would not hire someone naive. Right now you are in the hornet's nest. And you better be honest with me. I shrugged my shoulders. Just how much do you know? Only that you were escorted by the radiant son of Benizio, and that you met the doge twice. Even my hands have limit to their reach. Eh, how honest of you. It is not me who is locked with you. I remembered where my ship is docked, and how many guns are looking at it. I see. I only know that they want me to find the pirates. Alba sat in the thinker's pose, after a few minutes of thinking. She lifted her head. Knock knock mother. I am back. Patricia entered with a teapot. 
Alba clapped her hands and nodded to me. Let's discuss the business after some tea. A. Eh? The tea was nice but a bit too hot. There was no sugar, no snacks, and no conversation. After I finished drinking the cooled down tea, we all sat by the small table. We have bad news. A. Eh? Patricia stiffened. The government plans to attack. We lack the supplies to sail to a different location. Alba threw me a meaningful glare. Luckily, our friend here might help us with it. Am I right? She drilled me with her glare. Not a problem. I just need to know where to go. I answered without hesitation. Then, I will bring you a map of major shipping routes. Fetch us a few tons of provision and we'll be even. Alba left us. Just what did you two talk about? It was Patricia's turn to glare at me. Nothing. You. P. By the evening we finished discussing what exactly I need to bring, and where I will be hunting. Finally, I was standing at the pier, fully briefed. Bye bye, work hard to please your superiors. Alba was smiling and waving. Yes. Phew, finally this day's over. I'll go and read some. When Patricia turned round and started walking away, Alba caught her by the collar. Where do you think you are going, dear? You will join your wonderful friend in her mission. It is your problem to make sure we receive everything we need before those mother furs arrive. A. Wait. Wah. No. P. Stop throwing a tantrum. Time is not waiting. Alba leaned closer to Patricia. It's your chance. A. What? You. Mother. I hate you. P. Can you, please, stop this? I would be more than grateful if you have this talk away from me. Finally, my patience ran low. I just felt that it will continue for a long time. You heard your mate. Fairwinds and following seized Tilda. Alba pushed Patricia towards the ship. The girl immediately stomped towards ramp. This is not over. You hear me? After a couple more threats. Patricia disappeared on the deck. Now it was my turn to face Alba. Gulp you bet I will not let you run away, should anything happen. You better pray you meet that person, rather than return empty-handed. Got it? I nodded fervently. Then I don't dare hold in you here any longer. Farewell, I will be waiting for you. She smiled and waved to me until I was on the ship. After some awkward maneuvering and zigzagging between pirate ships, I reached open sea. All this time I was glared at. This is not my fault, you know? As if I care. If it was not for you, I would not even be here. P. The sailing continued successfully, because there was no talking afterwards. Whenever I tried to start a conversation. I was hearing rude remarks and resentment. In the end I just had to accept that this won't work out, and focused on the controls. In the midnight I turned round and saw that Patricia was snoozing. If it was Veronica, I would have covered her with something, but this person will be fine by herself. By the dawn I approached one of the shipping routes between Benetian colonies, and stopped the ship by an island. MHM, where am I? R. Right, I am with that S.Y. cat. P. Good morning to you too. I returned to mindlessly looking at the horizon. I was bored to death, aside from a couple of seagulls on one of the guns. There was nothing to look at. I was even considering shooting the seagulls with an AA machine gun but I was reluctant to kill my only source of enjoyment for a brief moment of fun. To avoid spending time with Patricia, I headed to the deck and started fishing. In a couple of minutes, I caught some fish, and the seagulls carefully positioned themselves nearby. To show my gratitude for keeping me amused. I threw them a fish. They immediately voiced their gratitude. While I was busy looking at the seagulls, I noticed a ship in the distance. Four sisters no eleven. Ever since the newcomer girls arrived, my unquestionable status of the strongest was shaken. It was shaken even more than when Mo claims herself to be the strongest. For this reason, the war council was gathered. Why would I want to help you? I hugged Whiskey. Come on. If my position is questioned, then I will have no choice but to start flipping skirts left and right tilde. You're gross. Wh so, are you in? Whatever, 
be happy I had nothing to do, otherwise I would have refused. With this my battleship strike force was formed, now it was the time to perform a not so precise strike at the pride of my adversaries, I will come, and declare, I killed a dragon. Stop shouting, you freak, if a dragon hears that, it will fly away in a second. Whiskey hurried to gag me, you're right, it would be a shame if my trophy runs away before it faces my guns. You damned glory seeker. She growled, and continued walking, we were on a mountain trail, leading to the last place where a dragon was seen. Ever since the four of us started showing off, the dragon population of this region decreased to none. Well, to kill the strongest creature in the worlds is the same as declaring we are the strongest. Ah, those good times, when the mountain grass was greener, and we were shelling dragons left and right. Tilda. You still owe me that one dragon you claim to be yours, even though I opened fire first. Wick or Tilda, come here. Big Sis will compensate everything Tilda. You stay a few thousand feet away from me. Yet, she was standing in place, and her arms were forced to stay low. She wants to hug me Tilda. Here I come Tilda. Hug D did I not say? Wick yes, yes. My cute time to wants to hug so I absolutely must do it. My hands were on her back, and had clear path lower. It was too early to use this chance, since we have the entire day to ourselves. I dedicate this salvo to Whiskey's butt's softness, and then I will be beaten to death. Still worth it, we peeked from behind a rock. Here it is, a dragon's nest. And the dragon must be nearby. Have you brought it? Yes. We unpack the secret weapon. Here it comes. We, we opened the package, and now our ultimate dragon slaying equipment saw the light. Four of hearts. We arc. I took the card. Seven of bikes. We arc. I took another card. Three of hearts. We, you really did it? So? We, I put the recently received card on top. Four of tiles. Here comes my five of tiles. Wait. UGH. This was her last one. Get wrecked, you loser. It was her moment of triumph. Yes, yes Tilda. My cute little sister should be rewarded Tilda. Sta. Before she could run away I caught her and squeezed. After a couple more games, my radar picked up a dragon on approach. A huge dragon landed in its nest. We finally left our hideout. Hi Tilda. The dragon turned its head and prepared to burn us alive. Or so it thought. I am the black dragon, the one who will take your head. During our hunts I left a few dragons alive, to spread my name around the world. It worked out. Since this dragon was now shaking like a lamb in front of a dragon. Wait. Listen. How about we talk? It started talking. Why should I? I came to slay you. All guns aimed. Hey. It's my prey. I looked at Whiskey, who was weirdly ready to fire, go to hell, Jerksy, I said you owe me, now it's the time for payback, Wick guys, I'm too young to die, I, I can be of use to you, please, for the love of the gods, don't kill me, Shadap, it's my prey, I called you here to help me, not to take away my honor, and here I am, helping you to return from heaven to earth. With incomprehensible East Coast accent, incomprehensible Midwest accent, with even more incomprehensible East Coast accent, completely incomprehensible Midwest Sandeer accent, with boom 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 we stopped arguing, after something exploded nearby. Hell. Yeah. Target straddled. New Jersey. Can you confirm? Mo. Missouri. NJ plus with. That's right. I was stalking this guy for a couple of days. T for keeping it distracted. Mo. Go to. Incomprehensible American accent. NJ plus we please. I beg you. I can be a dog. I can be a doormat. I can be anything. Just keep this one off my back. Hey, Mo. Will you give me this dragon if I draw a Dujinshai of Great Fire Demon, and distribute it around the academy? Nay. Mo. I will be doing all of your homework. Wick. Ark. Fine. 
But if you fail to do any of these, Mo finally left the radio frequency. Phew. NJ plus we are, right, we have this one here. I finally remembered about the reason it all started. The poor dragon was hiding in one of the craters. Is it over? I kind of have no desire to kill it. We thank you, thank you, thank you. After arguing with the two obnoxious sisters it is hard to have a will to have fun. We yeah, Mo spoiled us all of the fun. I racked my brain on what to do with it. Geez, fine, you there. Come with me, if you try to run away. I pointed at MK7 and showed finger gun. I absolutely will not disappoint you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just like this we brought an exotic pet back to the academy. V3CH19, Battle of Unknown Island I climbed to the observation post and observed the ship. It was a lonely military vessel. I headed to the bridge. Patricia was still there. I saw a warship. You're more experienced in this. What does it do here? How big is it? She immediately livened up. Medium sized, I believe. I led her to the windows and pointed in the distance. The ship was barely visible. It might be the reason why it did not notice us. Hoo hoo hoo. It is a scout. It did not change course so it didn't notice us. Prepare, a convoy is passing here. She was smiling like crazy, and in this fit, she started patting my back. Got it. No torps, no speed, no guns, no ships, and I am supposed to bring something. Just like Patricia said, a convoy showed up in an hour. There were twelve ships in total but two of them were heavily armed galleons. S. P. How powerful is their broadside? From 10 to 20 guns per side, and 200 bayonets on the deck. No sane pirate would attack this convoy without a galleon of their own. She finished this unpromising speech. My foil hull was damaged by a rapier. What would happen if a cannon hits me? All hands, man the battle stations. I set full ahead and prepared the guns. Are you insane? Patricia started pulling the steering wheel out of my hands. I am insane. When the ship approached to a suitable distance, I opened fire. Bang 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 I fired he shells, since I am against wooden ships, and my goal here is to sink them, not to scratch their bellies. As the first shells straddled a galleon, both of them started turning towards me and the transports turned the sails away from me. Bang 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 the second salvo was more successful, I achieved several hits to the target's side. What is going on? Patricia was lost. I am the being that contradicts the common sense. I am not going to lose here. Uh huh. P. Bang 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 after I achieved five hits. The leading galleon appeared to be incapacitated. I turned my guns to the second ship. Bang 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 the ship was not hit. On the contrary, several small clouds of smoke appeared on its deck. I heard a ring. The enemies were firing their rifles. They opened fire. After the first rings happened, Patricia finally left her trance and started actively looking at the surroundings. Hard to port side. They are measuring the range. P. Boom boom indeed, as I turned, the galleon fired broadside, neither of the shots hit me but the splashes confirmed that I could not be happy to be hit. Bang 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 I opened fire to shut up the cannons. Bang 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 all shots hit, and the galleon started turning away. The machine guns joined the firing, and the defenseless ship was soon shredded by their fire. Boom boom while I was focused on the second ship. I managed to forget about the first one. It fired several guns at me. Achieving a hit, ding hull breach above the waterline. Damage control team sent. High minus 98% bang 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 I fired back, and then kaboom there shook, as the galleon exploded. Oh god. Patricia closed her ears and shivered. I managed to hood the poor galleon. By that time I was already moving at 26 knots and was rapidly approaching the transports. I left the second galleon to its fate, and prepared to cause some trouble to the transports. Two of the transports immediately surrendered, the rest of them scattered in an attempt to flee. Should those two be enough? Nay, we should either sink them all, or capture, 
No survivors, Patricia declared it in a calm tone, now this is crazy. This is us or them, we will be dead, if the doge's dogs track us down. I am against this too but choosing between my survival, and their survival, I have to choose the former. She avoided my glare and headed to the deck. The hunt began. The poor transports could either surrender, or die. The first transport faced my guns, and before it could surrender, it sunk. I will return to rescue the survivors later. Bang 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 the second ship was sunk too. This time with even less survivors. I trembled after seeing the scared faces of the people. Still, I tried to stop the rest of the ships. I was hoping they will surrender, since killing them is the worst outcome. The people here are only guilty of being at the receiving end of the violence. Aside from the four previous ships, I captured three damaged ships, and three ships were sunk. In the end, I had the entire deck worth of people, and the entire stowage of goods. Ding you received one copper coin, one gold coin, five nineteen upgrade points IJN Kirin Army. DDL Upgrade Points 27 Torpedoes 06 HP 3676 High minus 98% Damage Control Compensation minus 0.2% plus AU minus 96% 2889 nometers 3 single turret increase caliber 0200 dual gun turrets 0400 15 dual torpedo mount, kerosene air increase caliber, 0 100 improved mounts, 0 250 improved propulsion, 0 500 V3 CH20. Warden and her seagulls after a successful commerce raid, we set sail back to the pirate base. We now had a full crew worth of sailors, and a bulk carrier worth of goods. I was subconsciously guiding the ship while I myself indulged in fishing. Chirping my seagull friends were right here, waiting for their share. Nothing could concern me. Things were going so smoothly that I even started wondering if I am missing something. For example, the sailors were quietly sitting in the crew cabins, or on the deck. They were fishing, playing cards, and telling tales to each other. Almost as if they were heading back home, and not to the lair of brutal pirates who previously killed their comrades. While I was engulfed in the thoughts, another fish bit the bait. I lifted it out of the water, and it fell right to the seagull's table. Good for you, you squeaking bastards, I sighed, and continued waiting for a fish. When I caught another one, I heard a louder call from the seagulls. I looked there, and barely held back a scream. There were not three, not ten. Not even twenty seagulls. Hey, when did you guys come here? Chirping don't. Don't look at me fish. Hey, I am really out of fish in here. I spend a lot of time to catch one of them. I don't have a way to catch an entire. Or do I? I turned the steering wheel. What are you doing now? We are supposed to return. Patricia was fuming. I have a bunch of people to feed and a flock of seagulls. And how do you plan to? P. Splash 1 depth charge rolled off the stern, right on top of a school. Boom what happened? Everyone was startled when the charge exploded. Patricia followed me outside the ship. As we walked to the stern, she saw the feeding of the seagulls. Ah. She started screaming. What? Do you have an idea what is going on? She was shouting at me. Indeed I have no idea why are you screaming at me. Look there. She pointed at the seagulls. And I am feeding a flock of seagulls. Then Patricia started shaking me. Are you crazy? P. Can you please stop your hysterics? Ha ha ha. Stop my hysterics. Yes, right. Let me stop. Let me stop worrying that you are trying to kill us all. Yeah, right. Why would I even be concerned that we are going to die? Now it was my turn to be asking if she's crazy. Those are just... Seagulls? I nodded. Yeah, right, they are. She was showing quote marks with her fingers. What are they then? I looked at the flock that was done eating the fish, and sat at the ship. 
The seagulls were sitting everywhere, on the gun barrels, on the masts and rails, on the cables, and one smart bastard was even sitting at the frontmost point of the ship and spread out its wings. Those are the storm wings. They bring storms wherever they fly. The poor sailors who meet them, they always end up in a storm. And few survived to tell the tale of the storm wings. Patricia shivered and then curled on the deck. I approached one of the birds, and without meeting any resistance picked it up. I was holding it with my two hands on its sides. Still, the bird was only looking at me with its yellow eyes. So, little bastard, are you bringing us storm? Of course, the bird was just looking at me with its stupid eyes. Not going to talk, are we? I patted its belly, and after I was satisfied, I put the bird back on its original seat, the 76mm gun barrel. I ignored Patricia's nonsense and returned to fishing. Even though I'd blown them an entire school of fish, there were a few seagulls waiting for my catch. We returned to the pirate lair by the night. The port was barely lit by a couple of lamps. If I had no night vision, I wouldn't be even able to maneuver here. After the ship docked, the pirates escorted the sailors away, and received the goods. Patricia and I headed to report back to Alba. The door opened and a blonde girl entered the office. What took you so long? The doge barked. I had to take another route. Veronica bowed to the doge. Where is the cat beast? D. She was intercepted by the pirates. Their main base was not where we expected it to be. V. Will she be able to handle everything? D. Of course. I trust her abilities. V. Then what about your mission? D. I saw the black demon from a distance. V. Are you going to vouch that she will return to us? D. She will. And with an even better offer she will consider helping us. I witnessed her might first hand. She is a great asset to the Republic. We must bring her to our side. With this, Veronica finished her report and exited the office. As the doors closed, she sighed. I am waiting for you. Don't keep me waiting. For it is our destiny. Four sisters know twelve. It was another sweet day when my lifestyle was interrupted by my sisters. Right after the lessons ended and I returned to the dormitory, somebody knocked at my door. Of course, I had to check who it was. Even though I hoped it was not the freak. Hey Tilda, are you busy? Missouri nonchalantly entered, without even waiting for a permission. I am. Great, help me out then. She outright ignored my words and fell into the armchair. What do you need? Mo smiled almost as weirdly as the other weirdo, and declared, If the black dragon has her dragon pet, then I must show everybody that I am even better, since I am the great fire demon. She stood in a weird pose with her eye closed by her palm. In a second I understood that I am about to be dragged into another silly contest of my weirdo big sisters. Just why can't you two bear, and leave me alone? Come on, whiskey. We must show the oppressing dragon what the freedom actually means. We will burn our path through their dark magic with our indomitable powers. In a blink of my eyes she was already wearing an eye patch and was holding that stupid staff. You know what? I'm. Great. Out. Listen to my command and burn my enemies. How does that one sound? Mo. Great. Now, this one. In the name of their. You you are. After I somehow managed to survive the chance, Missouri calmed down and went to buy some drinks. I closed the door, and made sure none of the locks were left open. Knock knock I am not here. Okay, okay, but let me take my staff. I looked around and faced I forgot to throw out her weird looking piece of a snag with a LED light tied to it. I opened the door and, now, let's continue Tilda. She pushed me a bag with bottles, and sat in the armchair. When we finished the cold drinks, she pulled me into the center of the room. Stand like that. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, stretch out your arm. Great. Now, use your palm to. What? Wait a darn moment. Wonderful. She put my palm on my eye, and now I was standing in that stupid weirdo pose. What did you do? I did nothing Tilda. 
She shrugged her shoulders and made an expression of innocence. You, I don't want to be a weirdo like you. Then why do you keep standing like that? She smiled. I, I, I am not standing like that because I want to help you. I am just trying to get this over with a sap. That's it. T. Yes, right Tilda. She patted my head. Now, read this for me. Mo gave me a piece of paper. In the name of the great, I am not going to read this silly text. But, Mo, I said. Then how am I supposed to know if my pose will work? Mo, why would you even care about those poses? You made up a new one just a week ago. Of course I need to make a new pose, since the seal constantly adapts to my attempts at breaking it. If I won't be breaking the seal, then my sealed powers of demon would stay dormant. I must be breaking through the aid suppression magic to keep the slumbering evil down, with the... Then my mind went blank. Now, do you understand, sister? Without your help, the world will be ruined. Will thee refuse the hand that begs for your help? Will thee turn your back to the millions of souls that are shivering in fear of the forces of evil? My mind resumed working too early, so I had to hear more weirdo nonsense. As I said, uh, why is she looking like she's about to FFF fine, but only once. I don't know why but the next day my sisters were laughing their ass off, and New Jersey was showing them something. Maybe she filmed Mo's silly moves. Ship girl dialogue lines, Fuji, delight, Kuranami announcement disclaimer, what is written here is a fanfic of what would my ship girl's dialogue lines look like if they were in Azerlane. The phrases were written in Azerlane style and refer to some of Azerlane characters. I don't own any rights to the game or its contents. Please, don't sue me. IJN Fuji ship description. Fuji class aircraft carrier number one. Fuji. Self introduction. I am Fuji. The strongest aircraft carrier of the Sigura Empire. Tremble, for I am. Just who did say midway? Receive, who woke me up. Was it you? Well, then, bow to me, the magnificent Fuji-sama. I am the harbinger of the future of the Sigura Empire. For now I will let you guide my path towards my glory. Log in. Welcome back, Anna-chan Tilda. Don't mind the mess Tilda. View details, hoo 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 Tilda. Wah, hey, you, did Fuji-sama not tell you to knock before you enter? Don't you dare looking in those books. Main screen 1, Anna-chan. Don't you agree that I am the best Tilda? Good. Then bring some milk to Fuji-sama. Main screen 2. Why am I painting with crayons? I want to, so I am doing it. Don't official paper me. Main screen 3. Stretches her back. Ah Tilda. It's so nice to stretch my back after all those years Tilda. Main screen 4. Anna-chan. Am I required here? No? Good. Then I'll go hang out with Enterprise and Essex. Main screen 5, Battleships. Ah, those rusting relics of the past. Hey, Anna-chan, don't you think Fuji-sama will do a better flagship than that bomb catcher Yamato tilde? Normal touch. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Anna-chan, why would you assume it was me who put a drawing pin on your chair? Special touch, uh, Anna-chan. What are you trying to find there? Special touch to k you are better to be ready for the consequences rub k chan Is there something you wanted Tilda? Mission reminder, we've got a new mission. Anna chan you are so oh 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 reliable Tilda. I am sure you can do everything without my help mission complete. Anna chan you don't plan to hoard all the rewards only for yourself, do you Tilda? Mail reminder. Here is your mail. A cracker explodes inside the envelope. Return to port. Welcome back, Anna-chan Tilda. You worked well, so Fuji-sama is proud of you Tilda. Upset, you outlived your usefulness. Don't bother me, stranger, Anna-chan Tilda. Let's play Tilda. What? You don't like it? Not my problem. Either get used to it, or stay silent. Friendly, what is it, Anna-chan? Ah. This I am just writing. You don't need to be bothered with it. So what? I need to keep tabs on you, 
since you are an unfathomable factor to my plans. Crush, K -k why are you here, Anachan? You want to play with me? Good for you, Tilda. Fujisama can find a bit of time to talk. So, what are you going to talk about, Tilda? Love, Kanachan surely tries hard to please Fujisama, Tilda. You want to help me with my planning? No, don't want to. Let's go and play. Yes, go and play. Bring me a ball, Tilda. Promise. Ha ha ha. I see. You are really unfathomable. At first I was wondering if you will be an obstacle to me but now I see. Yes, you are an integral part of my plan. You, and only you Tilda. Ha ha ha. Together we will make those relics of the past kneel. Ha ha ha. Commission complete. Oh, the commission team has returned. Anachan, go and congratulate them with another job well done. They did well at contributing to my rising glory Tilda. Enhancing complete. Ah Tilda. I almost feel that rust falling off. Flagship fight. K -k Tremble in fear. You weaklings. Fujisama is here. Victory. Ha ha ha. As if you'd expect something different from Fujisama. Defeat. It looks like my estimations were off. No problem. I will correct the plans for the next engagement. Skills. Is this all that you've got? Now it is the time for you to face the despair. Low HP, starting evasive maneuvers. Additional voice line 1, sortie with Akagi or Kaga, don't get in my way. You rust bucket. Additional voice line 2, sortie with Amagi. Ani-chan, stay beside me, you're incapable of protecting yourself from air attacks. Additional voice line 3, sortie with any Essex, don't you even think that you lent to the jet hero before me. Additional voice line 4, sortie with two battleships or battle cruisers. K -k -k I am sorry but my pilots were not trained to distinguish between fat chunks of metal. Additional voice line 5, sortie with at least 5 of Eagle Union. Whom do you call Midway? HMS Delight Ship Description. Delight Class Battle Cruiser. Delight, Hull Number 52. Self Introduction, I am Delight. The last battle cruiser of the Royal Navy, albeit I may be lacking in firepower but please, don't be shy to use me as a substitute heavy cruiser, should the need arise. Receive, good day to you, your excellency. My name is Delight. Please, allow me to contribute to your fleet. Oh my, I am glad to be of service Tilda. Log in, oh my, I am glad to see you. Let us do our best today. View details, oh my. Your Excellency is here? You want to check on me? I am flattered Tilda. Main screen 1. Oh, did I daydream again? I am sorry to bother you with this. Main screen 2. How durable am I? I have 18 dedicated subsystems used to help in damage control. This includes. In short, I would not go down like my aunt did. Not from a magazine explosion. Main screen 3. Oh my your excellency surely knows when I would need a bit of rest Tilda. Thank you very much. Main screen 4. Oh my. Thank you Tilda. Auntie Hood, wait for me Tilda. Normal touch, your excellency. I would like to ask you to keep your actions in check. Special touch, I apologize for being stern but your actions are unforgivable. Mission reminder, your excellency, should we make preparations to complete the mission? Any appropriations would be a welcome addition to our war efforts. Mission complete. Oh my, to think your excellency would finish the mission so fast Tilda. Mail reminder, your excellency, I will leave this mail here. Please tell me if you require reading it out loud. Return to port. Oh my, that was swift. Your excellency just stepped out of the office, and already returns with another victory. Upset, my apologies. Your Excellency, I have an appointment scheduled. I will try to find time for you but it might be hard. Stranger, I am ready to do my part. Your Excellency, should a need arise, I am ready to fight tooth and nail for Her Majesty and you. Friendly, good day to you. What I am doing? Nothing. Actually, a little stroll can hardly be considered an actual deed. Would you mind joining me? Crush, oh my. You did everything perfectly. 
once again. I am a bit jealous to see your excellency outshine auntie, yet I am excited to see what you will accomplish in the future tilde. Love, R. Did I space out again? No, no, there is nothing wrong with me. I was just wondering why I am thinking of your excellency all the time. Love, oh my, I beg you, don't make such jokes. Seriously, oh my, promise. Thank you for the trust you showed me. Oh my, of course Tilda. The feeling is mutual Tilda. I may be a bit slow on uptake but when I gain the momentum, it is hard to stop me Tilda. Hi 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 Tilda, commission complete, your excellency. Should we go and greet the commission team? Enhancing complete, new gunpowder, check, new systems, check, new damage control, check, better reliability, check Tilda, flagship fight, I am sorry, victory, please, forgive the sins I have committed, defeat, everyone, fall back, I will give you time to retreat, skills, for the eternal glory of the royal navy, low HP, oh oopsies. I feel like we have the X problem. Additional voice line 1, sortie with hood, auntie hood, watch me. Additional voice line 2, sortie with Bismarck, don't you even think you can blow me up? I would sooner go down from the amount of shell holes I get, than from my magazines blowing up. Additional voice line 3, sortie with at least one of, New Jersey, Richelieu, Jean Bart, oh my. Who did say our age has passed? HMS Delight, retrofit, receive, good day to you, your excellency. First ship of kingdom class, Ro. My apologies. I mean Delight is here. View details. Is there something you wanted? Nothing. What a shame. Main screen 5, your excellency? Of course, my guns are the strongest in the fleet. Flagship fight, face me. The ultimate power of the Royal Navy. Victory, that is what is supposed to happen, now, and ever after. Defeat, I am ashamed to you, Princess. IJN Kuran Army Ship Description, Kuran Army Class Destroyer Lead Number 1, Kuran Army, Self Introduction, Kuran Army, Destroyer Leader of the Sigura Empire, Designed to provide escort against light forces of the enemy. What? There is nothing else to add. Receive. Kuran army is ready for service. Waiting for a new assignment. What? There is nothing else to add. Log in. Welcome back. How long I was here? I was here since you left. View details. I am ready to provide all necessary information. Main screen 1. Stairs. Main screen 2. Yes? Ready for new orders. Main screen 3. Emotion control. Ask Gaskagan, she is better than me. Main screen 4, being alone. I am used to it. Main screen 5, do I wish to have a family? I always bear her in me. Normal touch, waiting for the next assignment. Special touch, it tickles. Should I be checked by Akashi? Rub, per I deserve no forgiveness. Send me to the front lines to repent for losing cool. Mission reminder. I suggest prioritizing the missions that can be done with less resources used. Mission complete. The rewards were brought to Akashi's. Is the storage not there? Return to port. Welcome back, Anai-chan. Was Unicorn wrong when she said it boosts morale? Upset, emotion control. Welcome, Commander. In robotic voice, stranger, yes? I am ready for a new assignment. Talking? It wastes energy. Refused. Friendly. Yes? I am ready for a new assignment. Why am I so keen on being sent to fight? I was created to fight. It is my designation. Talking? Was that not enough? Crush. Yes? I am. Sorry. I will work harder to improve my emotion control. Unnecessary? Emotions interfere with my fighting capabilities. You are worried? I'm a tool. You don't need to be worried about me. Love. I am a failure. You love me the way I am. Thank you, Commander. I am alright. I am ready to fight for your sake, even though I failed at what I am designed for. Promise, you love me the way I am? I am grateful for your love. I hope you can bear with me being like that. I know only war. I was born for it. I live for it. I will die in it. But you are my ray of light, that will keep this heart beating.
even though I wish for it to stay still. Commission complete. Commission team returned. What? There is nothing else to add. Enhancing complete. Capabilities improved by 2%. I request being sent into a fight. To get used to the new strength. Flagship fight. All units, follow me. Attack indiscriminately. Victory. Cool head. Cool heart. Precision. Defeat. I failed at controlling my emotions. Forgive me, commander. Skills. Face my darkness. Low HP. Just like back then. Additional voice line 1. Sortie with at least two destroyers. Squadron. Follow me. Torpedoes at ready. No hesitation. Additional voice line 2. Sortie with at least five of Sigura Empire. We will show the invaders what happens when they trespass. Additional voice line 3. Sortie with Gaskagn. Senpai. Please. Share your wisdom. Four sisters no thirteen. Humming I was looking over the books on a bookshelf. I searched for a history book for the tomorrow history lesson, to which I successfully managed not to prepare. After New Jersey showed me a good TV series, I borrowed her discs with it, and spent the past two days watching. It is the evening of Sunday, and tomorrow I will have to teach the class. Once again I failed. In a second my mood swung from cheerful to grim. When I remember the series I watched ten minutes ago, I feel happy. Then I remember that I am running out of time and will be goofing at the tomorrow's lesson. There is one person who knows the stuff I am supposed to be teaching but my pride as big sister will be hurt by contacting her. The other person is of no help. And the third person. I will really stop even looking like big sister. If I ask the youngest sister to help me, then I remembered that thing New Jersey brought back a few days ago. So, how much do you know of this country's history? I asked a dragon. I might share some wisdom with you, if you ask me politely. What an arrogant thing. Well then, I am no stranger to politeness. Oh, great dragon. Can you please share your wisdom on the topic of history tilde? Of course I will. Just put those exploding things away from my face, see? It wasn't that hard, was it? The dragon started nodding. How old are you? Uh, why you see? I am, younger than I require. It nodded. Well then, if you are useless to me, or if I will be a fool because of you, then. I showed the cutthroat gesture. With the reptiles established amenability, I started listening to the history lesson. Weirdly enough, the dragon was telling a very interesting story. It surely did its best to everything I would require. After all, its own life was at stake here. The dragon ended up a very good teacher, and I learned everything I needed. By the time I was going to sleep, I felt like I had everything I will require at the lesson. I lied down in the bed, and closed my eyes. I went to the dreamland. Wait. I jumped up from the bed. I forgot to prepare. I could only tear. As I wobbled to the desk and started writing down at least some questions and tasks for the students. After I was done, I noticed that it may not be enough and continued writing down more and more questions. And more. And more. And more. The next morning. In the classroom. Big sis. Are you sure you don't need to sleep? Mo. I'm absolutely sure. Then can you tell me the same but with your eyes opened? NJ, I'm absolutely sure. The lesson started successfully, and I was retelling the dragon's history line. And that is how, insert a king's name, the fourth became the king and established this country. I was confidently telling everything, and even my smart sisters did not interrupt me. Unlike what they usually do, the next ruler, insert another king's name. The second took control of the northern lands, and united two nations under his flag, by using his. The union lasted until, because of that the kingdom enjoyed prosperity for another century. Next is, AMD Zen Heftart D. Snorting I woke up only after the lessons ended. Once again I failed. V3CH21. Double agent you found us a good amount of resources. For a second I expected a continuation but Alba was silent. Is this it? 
Why would I need to say more? Or perhaps you expected some sort of a reward? She approached me. Don't worry, we all are brothers and sisters here. She patted my shoulder and gave me a meaningful smile. Well, this beast did a decent job. Still, she could have done it faster. Patricia started spouting nonsense, as if you could have done it better. Of course I could. The merchants would surrender immediately just after seeing the black demon. That black sail battleship came to my mind. Ha, huh, Patricia, make us some tea. A, eh, can't a guard do it? Like, I am fine with talking for a bit longer, and we are. P, go and make us some tea. Alba cut off the started objection. Yes, mother. As Patricia left the hut, I felt a glare on me. Alba was sitting and glaring at me, without saying a word. I also did not rush to start talking. And so we spent at least a minute just looking at each other. Fine. I'll start talking. So, what do you want? What do you think of Patricia? It was the least expected question. She's rude. She lacks manners. Eh? Yeah. And she also is too ungrateful. And constantly nags. Eh? Wait, why would you be describing her like this? Alba only laughed. Do you know why are you still alive? I stiffened. Because I am useful? No, because you are expected to return. The doge already knows where we might be, since we heard nothing from the second smuggler. He wouldn't need a lot of time to find us. And unless you draw his attention away, he will start with this area. Eh, why would you tell me that? Just a friendly reminder. In case you understand what is better for you. A, eh? and in case I say no? Alba shrugged her shoulders and waited for me to continue talking. Something is rotten in the state of Benizio. After my words, Alba covered her mouth with her palm. She was clearly about to laugh. I continued thinking. Why do the pirates want to stay here? Wouldn't it be easier to run away? Benizio has battleships and a lot of them. I remembered the port's roadstead, where dozens of ships were anchored. Some may call us pirates but we are more than that. It is not the matter of robbing but a matter of our survival. A. Eh? Before this talk continued, Patricia entered with a teapot. After we finished drinking, Patricia and I prepared to leave. Wait. A. Eh? Yes? P. Kuranami has another mission to do, we will discuss it, while you will order supplies for her. A week's worth of dried food and fresh water. A, eh? Patricia appeared to be dissatisfied but nodded and left the hut. So, what are you going to ask? I faced Alba, take a look at this map. She spread out an old map of nearby area, looking. In case you change your mind, come here. She drew a circle at one of the islands. What if I bring a tail? You appear to be fast enough for battleships or galleons to follow. Also, it is only a messenger. I would be surprised if you decide to join our cause but in case you want. This is the rendezvous point. A. Eh? Why wouldn't you try to sell me your cause? She was weirdly passive. Unlike the doge who promised me rewards. Actions speak more than the promises. In either case there will be bloodshed. Can you promise me to keep one secret? She looked in my eyes with a timid expression. I will try. No. Promise me. A. Eh? Okay. Alba collected her thoughts. We are preparing to strike the heart of the Leviathan. While they will be plundering our main base, most of our forces will strike the capital. We will raise the city and sink whatever we could. Try to stop us, if you want but in the end we, the free people, will either die, or clutch to this only chance. You are free to go with the supplies you get. Also, I would be grateful if you pass this envelope to the doge. Go. She pushed me away and pretended to lose interest in talking to me. Understood. Farewell. Maybe we will meet again. I headed to the harbor. Patricia was standing near my ship. What? Done talking? P. Yes. Your supplies are on the deck. I'm not a porter so carrying them is your problem. P. Thanks. What? Not going to talk? Whatever. After your mission is over, report back to me. 
I was put in charge of your operations. What a pain. P. Nice to know that. I am going away for a long time. What? Hey, it was not mentioned. Why would you go away by yourself? You are yet to prove your capabilities. I need to find someone to supervise. Wait. It's night already. Ah, wait a moment. I will pack some things and return. Before Patricia could run away I caught her sleeve. It is a special mission. Only I am going. Patricia looked at me with stupefied face. Mother. She ran away, and while she was gone, I sailed away. V3CH22. The capital punishment on my way back to Benizio, the capital city. I managed to increase the amount of seagulls even further. Now they were everywhere. All right, little guys. How about you stop sitting all over the deck? Go sit there. I pointed at the superstructure. Of course. Neither seagull moved. Look Tilda, a big yummy fish Tilda. Come here. Right, come here Tilda. I beckoned them, and just in an hour of thankless job I managed to move them one meter closer to the superstructure. At least there is a meter of deck where I don't need to be walking on seagulls. Since there was nothing to do, I fished and continued my bird training. By the evening I achieved a commendable result of having some of the seagulls sit at the superstructure. The next time I am on a shore. I should search for materials for bird nests. Maybe that would encourage those white and black bastards to settle away from the deck. After all, I walk there much more frequently than they do anything useful. Two days after I set sail out of the pirate lair, I started seeing merchant ships in the distance. Every one of them was changing course to avoid me, so I did not touch them to avoid making them even more nervous. After a few more days I finally arrived to the city. The warships on the roads had immediately became curious, and chased after me. I had to shake them off and approach the city in the night, without any lights. Then I disembarked and proceeded to the city. Once again, I approached the checkpoint on the entrance. Next, a beast black. The guards were on alert. If your guess is right, then what? I showed them my left side where the katana scabbard was. W welcome to Benizio. The guards stiffly smiled and cleared the path. I became quite infamous. Did I? I did my best to pretend I don't have a geographic cretinism, and tried to remember where I need to go. The night streets were lively and filled with many people. There were bars and taverns. There was music everywhere and artists were performing on the streets. I even saw that the market is open. While I was looking at the sight of people carousing, I remembered Alba's words. The pirates are going to attack and it is up to me to decide what I will be doing. Luckily, I remembered the way well enough to find the ultra-rich district, and after that finding the doge's palace was a matter of time. When I approached the gates, I was stopped by the purple coats. What do you need here? Soldiers picked up rifles and looked at me. I am here to report to. How was Veronica called here? To the shining sun? PFFFT. The soldiers immediately covered their mouths. Yeah, I am not too knowledgeable how Veronica is called. I shrugged my shoulders. Still, my words were more or less enough to convince the soldiers. Andrea, stay here. I'll ask around if they are waiting for a beast. One of the soldiers entered the courtyard. Tell that Curan army has arrived. Will do. The soldier disappeared. He returned almost immediately after he entered the palace. She can enter. He called right from the doorstep. Of course, the soldier who guarded me stepped aside. When I entered the palace, I was met by a maid. Signora Veronica is waiting for you. Please, follow me. I gazed at the upper middle of the woman and only absent-mindedly nodded. Regrettably, the pleasing view disappeared right the next moment. I was led to Veronica's room, right after the door opened, I was strangled by the girl's hug. I was so worried you wouldn't return. V, yes, yes. Now stop strangling me. Don't you even think I will let you go now? She increased the strength of her hug. Usually when you are hugged by a beautiful girl, and pressed into her chest, you would be pleased. In my case, 
I was really struggling to survive. Even after Veronica stopped this murder attempt, I was not let go out of her arms. What took you so long? Don't you have a heart? You kept me worried, and now you are breaking my heart by trying to escape. I was embarrassed. Not by her chastising but by being sat on her lap. I'd rather be lying on those soft thighs, than sit like a little child. Well, I started telling everything I found out from the base, the layout, the amount of ships, the suspected types, the stockpiles, the forces, and even the menu. Veronica patiently heard me out but did not release me. Great. Now, my lovely kitten Tilda, you made me anxious. And that is why you are going to be punished by having to be my hugging pillow Tilda. V. The punishment was executed right the next instant. V3CH23. Declaration of war after my term was served. I was taken to the doge. I told him the same things about where the lair is, and how many ships the pirates have. The doge was sitting and thinking about something. Then he put an envelope on the edge of the desk. Inside you will find the bank notes for your reward. Also, there will be a form for citizenship. With this the contract is fulfilled. D. But having a form also means I might be rejected. I felt a bit cheated. The forms are given only to the people who are getting the citizenship, not to the candidates. He cut off my objections. Understood. If that is it, then I will be going. I headed to the door. If you are willing to work, then I have another task for you. I turn 180 and prepared to listen. The pirates are increasing their activity. Veronica reported that you have a strong and fast ship, the perfect solution for our headache. D. I drilled the doge with my gaze. If they want me to work, then they should have money. I don't want to live on a street after my pocket money runs out. What? He didn't get what I meant. I expect something in return for work. Ha ha ha. The doge started laughing all of a sudden. Silly, girl. Where did you see an unpaid work? Ha ha ha. You are asked to work, and the thing you ask is whether you are paid for it. Just where is your common sense? Ha ha ha. I was wronged and mocked. Finally, after laughing for a few minutes. The doge re-established his calm posture and looked at me. Well, well, it is hard to make me laugh. Good job, little one. The payment is ten times the previous, plus reward for every pirate ship sunk. And if that is not enough, should you bring me the standard of the pirate flagship, the Black Demon, then you will be granted patrician title, and the right to own property in Benizio and every colony. D. It sounded too good to refuse. As I was about to give my positive answer, I remembered about the envelope from Alba. I suddenly remembered. He he he. I timidly passed the envelope to Veronica, who quickly opened it. She immediately showed an expression of disgust. Read it. D. Are you sure, father? V. Read it, stupid woman. D. I warned you. V. Dear Maurizio. How are you? Are you feeling fine? I am so glad to be writing to you after all this time. I hope that worms did not eat you already, and I will be able to gut you myself. Don't you die before I arrive, you stinking pile of sea. The letter continued with more and more insults and swearing. Don't forget to send me that lunatic. Sincerely wishing you death, Alba. So, did I not warn you? As Veronica finished reading the letter, a cup flew at her. The girl elegantly dodged it but the next cup was thrown immediately after. Veronica did not dodge it in time, and the cup shattered on her head. Then another one did the same. The tearing girl straightened and after the doge calmed down, she bowed. Next time, keep your foul mouth shut. The girl bowed again. I remained silent as well. Great. D. What are you waiting for? You stupid beast. Do you need a special invitation to tell me about how the F you managed to meet that W? D. I was brought to her right after I arrived. When she sent me on another mission, she gave me this envelope. The beast is to be locked down, if you agree to work. Then report back. Otherwise, remain in Veronica's room. Get out of my sight, 
both of you. Don't you dare returning without a reason. The doge picked up a cup, to show what will happen if we continue staying here. Veronica was silent until we returned to her room. Don't mind father's behavior. That woman is the most wanted criminal. She hijacked the most powerful of Benizio warships, and then made a pirate gang that keeps on harassing the merchants in the region. He just was too agitated by her insolence. She started petting me but unlike normally. I did not purr. I was too concerned about Veronica, whose face was dirtied by thin lines of blood. In the night time I was thinking about what to do. I ended up in a precarious situation. I am de facto imprisoned, and running away will make me a criminal, the ally of pirates. Well, allying the pirates would be the logical outcome of this, or, I can stay here until the pirates come and burn down everything. In any case I cannot remain neutral. I need a port to refuel. And that is why I need an ally. The pirates are going to come and murder everybody but they have a wide network of bases, or should have. Benizio has good ports, pays me, and is ready to make me join them. But the doge. All in all, four sisters no fourteen. Recently the academy became livelier than usually. Some of the evening lessons were cancelled, and the students had more time to dress up and do various things. For example, they were having tea parties all the time. I was invited a couple of times but after some handiwork, the invitations stopped. Big sis, are you sure those parties are even necessary? I drank lemonade while big sis was trying on dresses, sent by a noble girl from our class. At least they are better than sitting all the day inside a room. She was struggling to choose between a green and a blue dress. Were you asked to attend? Once again they asked you, lovely Iowa, can you bless us with your presence? We are desperate, since neither of your sisters wants to attend. Save us, please. Ha ha ha. Bullseye. Ha. Big sis. They will continue to wipe their feet on you. Unless you stop following everyone's whims. Mo, instead of nagging me. You could have helped me. I have no idea what to do. Yeah, heads or tails? Tails. Yeah, I tossed the five cent and it landed. Blue. Are you sure? Yeah, the coin says so. Fine. Can you help me put it on? I doubt I can tie those ropes on the back. I helped her with the dress. Greetings, my ladies. Can you show me your invitations? We were halted by a lackey at the entrance. Despite my attempts at dissuading Big Sis, I ended up dragged into attending. However, now is my chance to avoid an entire evening of talking to snobs. I've got none Tilda. I said immediately, it's not a problem, Lady Missouri Tilda. The hostess walked out of the club. It was another silly noble, who only cared for prestige. Well, I am the most prestigious battleship right after Angie. It is such a pity Lady Wisconsin and Lady Jersey are not coming. Please, enjoy yourselves, Tilda. Before I managed to refuse this kind-hearted invitation, I was dragged inside. My social butterfly sister was working hard to maintain a circle of people around herself, since it's no doubt her dusk. She makes a lot of people approach this circle and stay in there for some time. Usually those petty nobles band up in their own cliques and then refuse to talk to the others, unless the others are too influential to ignore. She is not in any social circle, so everybody has to approach her, and then they also have to talk to each other. The four of us are the most influential here, since one battleship is the top of the world. I guess if the four of us demand something, then the entire world will kneel. If that was to happen, Iowa would. Would continue whining that she's ignored. I would be. I too have no idea what to do with the entire world. New Jersey is interested only in whiskey and 2D girls. And whiskey is interested in clinging to us. The world is safe, for now. I drained another glass of dark red liquid with fruit flavor. The cherry juice. As I was standing here, at the edge of the party. The hostess must have felt the duty of entertaining me. Is there something on your mind Tilda? She was one of the type who tries to carve a favor, 
and lick the boots of a strong. Why would there be so many parties? I'm running out of excuses to avoid those boring activities. After she giggled in delight, she started explaining. Did you not hear the news? What kind of news? Their royal family is going to visit the academy. That's the main subject of gossips. Everybody wants to approach the royals, so we exchange what we know. Why don't you attend more of the parties if you want to know? Tilda. Since there was nothing else for me to do, I started planning how to crash the party and get kicked out. Four sisters know 15. And what happened after that? I glanced at Hiwa, who was drinking away her shame. Then she climbed a table and started spouting nonsense. The typical one. Yeah, you're too naive. Why did you bring Mo in the first place? She made her point too damn clear. Despite my pity for Raiwa, she is the cause of it. I may have consoled her, if she actually thought with her head. After another silly party yesterday, I came here to complain. Usually I would hang out with her but I am a bit busy. New Jersey, at least look at me when you're talking. The PC would not run away from you. She started shaking my shoulders. I, there's nothing to talk about, and you know that. Mo did another weirdo thing and escaped the party. You brought her, you suffered the aftermath. If you want to drink here, then go ahead. But don't expect me to intervene for no reason. You you are. Yeah, as I reached the end of route, and approached the final picture, my hands became sweaty. I did not sleep for the entire night but it should be worth it. The previous pictures were great and the girl is great too. Just a couple more dialogue lines, and, blink the monitor shut down. Jaya. My entire night of efforts was pointless. I had a glimmer of hope left. I looked at the PC and, Iowa. Why the, incomprehensible East Coast accent, you shut down my computer. Without saying a word, she opened the curtains, and deadly radiation entered the room. Jaya. Then, she prepared to do the unthinkable, don't open the windows. And she did it. You know what? I am angry. You can either stay here and hear out my nagging, or go out and finally exit this place. I will be cleaning this pigpen. No objections. I would picked up a bunch of cleaning utensils I carefully hid, and started destroying my habitat. I could only accept this situation. Since right now she was at the terminal stage of big sisterhood, the since my little sisters are such jerks, I will be cleaning to soothe this pain and disappointment. Then I'll go and play outside. Leave the gadgets here. Yeah, what? I said, leave the gadgets here. Yeah, you want my death? It won't kill you. At least you will look at the world through your own eyes, and not through a screen. I guess she really is beyond sad. In the first time since I brought myself a pet, I decided to visit the reptile. Hiya, wanna play? I have no time for this nonsense, good for you. It was just a courtesy. Choose, soccer or basketball. This deflated ball will be useless for either of those but I am out of ideas. Real life is a tier game. Zazin. I don't even have an idea what either of those mean then choose randomly, otherwise I will be choosing another game. The Dragon Slayer. Soccer. After a brief explanation of the rules, we started. From the get-go I led the ball. I skillfully passed it under the dragon's body and kicked it. The ball flew right towards the gate. Pom at the last moment, the ball hit a large tail. TCH. Is this game even fun? You are not fun, the game is. The dragon kicked the ball with its paw, and it flew right through the entire length of the field, right into my gate. Score, go field yourself. I continued this again and again but the reptile was only moving a few meters at most, doing everything in a single move. The score was one-sidedly rising, and my motivation to keep living in this world was rapidly decreasing. Even eyes nagging would be better than this. Can you, like, become smaller? Why? Guess why? What Tilda? You are too small to fight me Tilda, I aimed MK7S at it. How about we talk this through, either become smaller, or I will make you smaller. No problem, 
the dragon started shining until it blinded me. When I finally could see again, I saw a girl, instead of the annoying reptile. A pretty girl, even on the level of 2D girls. My hand sunk into the pocket. Your expression is scary. The dragon talked with a cute, angelic voice. It would be more suitable for a lalai, than for a big chested horny girl, but I will take what I am given. I took a camera out of my pocket. I guess life is at least F tier game, after all. V3CH24 Rallying the forces while I was considering what to do, the morning came. Victoria was still sleeping. I cautiously separated myself from her and dressed. MHM R? You are awake? V? I am. I will go wander around. Sorry but you cannot. At least without my escort. Further would be fine with you being near me but you will be mad if you exit this room alone. V, then let's go to a restaurant? Victoria went stiff. You can't? Ha ha ha. Work. V, no problem. Can we at least have a breakfast together? Well, this can be easily done tilde. V, after the breakfast I had a lot of time to think. Our date with Victoria was disrupted but it doesn't mean I can be resting now. I remained in her room, since she said I wouldn't like her work, or sitting all day watching her paperwork. Her balcony had a nice view at the harbor. I noticed that some of the ships disappeared during the night, and some of them were preparing to head out. The attack on the pirates was approaching. I remembered the yesterday's events and decided to save Veronica. Pretty girls must not suffer this kind of a treatment. While the pirates cause mayhem, I will find her and rescue. I waited for the night, and waited for my skills to activate. I managed to use my evasion to squeeze out of Veronica's arms without waking her up. After a couple of minutes I confirmed that she is sleeping. And like an assassin, I made my way through the palace. The candles and lamps were doused, and I stealthed to the outside. With my night vision I saw how the ships set sail out of the port. It was the entire fleet. After I reached the port, and the water, I jumped into the sea and sailed by the waterfront all the way out of the city and proceeded to my ship. The next step was obvious. I sailed at maximum speed right towards the rendezvous point with the pirate messenger. On my way I did not encounter Benizio ships and escaped their waters with ease. Ha! Huh. If only I could cash this paper, because I escaped. I couldn't cash the bank note I received as my reward. Those ten gold coins were my hope to refill the torpedo stockpile. I'm not a battleship, so they are my only chance to sink the huge ships without becoming a Swiss cheese. I opened the statistics, and for no reason pushed the banknote into the transparent screen. Puff, and it disappeared. However, it gave me the entire promised sum. It was delivered right to my account, and I could take out the cash any time. Phew. This one is dealt with. It was the easiest payment I received. When I approached the rendezvous point, I saw a somewhat small ship with huge sail masts. I approached it and dropped the anchor at short range. Hey, pals, where is the recruitment booth? I shouted to them. Thank God, we thought nobody would come. Go to the main base. Her ladyship said you know where it is. I waved to the crew and headed where I was directed. Two days later I steamed into an ambush. It was not related to either side, it was my old friend, the Kraken. I was suddenly attacked by a huge tentacle and barely avoided it. The sea monster relentlessly attacked me but my high speed and maneuvering saved me. Still, I was too close to be safe. I dropped several depth charges and set them to explode at depth. Several minutes later the Kraken returned. It was fast, it was huge, and it was not going to let me run away. I must be the largest prey it ever saw, and it was the largest sushi I ever saw. The conflict of maze was inevitable. Splash I released another stern full of depth charges, and small bubbles of water occurred above the drop zone. Splash despite the continuous bombardment, the Kraken was at most repelled but I saw no signs of it slowing down or being wounded. Its main body was too deep to be affected by my previous shelling tactic, 
and it could quickly evade the slowly sinking barrels of explosives. My enemy was skillful, and I was resourceful. I turned to the closest island and reached shallows. The Kraken was foolish enough to follow me. Its huge body was clearly visible through the water, and so were the depth charges. The first drop was evaded but the longer the fight continued, the more worn out was the octopus. Splash it received a close explosion and was disorientated. I turned round and dropped everything that fitted on the stern rails. Boom the Kraken's shocked body surfaced and I jumped on top of it, with an entire air army of seagulls following. By the evening I had the entire ship stockpile filled with octopus meat, and a huge body towed after the ship. I, I accept this gift. Alba was looking at my toad array of tentacles. Even after I filled my belly and fed the entire legion of seagulls, I had more than enough meat to donate to the pirates' cause. V3CH25. The first explosions of war while the grunts were cutting off pieces of the Kraken. I was busy telling Alba about what I found. The fleet has moved. They must already be midway to us. Patricia glanced at me. They never even tried to be unpredictable. Their vanguard will strike tomorrow, plus minus a day. Alba sipped tea and also looked at me. Why are you so sure? I couldn't stop doubting her words. The pirates are not the smartest. Let's just say, I have a first-hand experience. Their tactic is to start with a skirmish to draw our fast ships, and then the main strike of battleships to sink our unguarded heavy forces. A. Hey, then what are our chances? Chances will be obliterated. Patricia shrugged her shoulders, as if she doesn't care. Then why are you not moving yet? They are going to arrive soon, and here you are waiting. They are overwhelmed and have less than ten heavy ships. Only one of which is similar to Benizio battleships. It is a common sense to avoid the unfavorable engagement. Even I knows that much. You think it will help us? I nodded again and again. Ha, huh? you may have a good ship but you are absolutely of no help in tactics. P, say again, you have a handful of ships and you are going to engage the superior enemy force. Stop it, you two. Cure an army. I will explain it. Just don't try to understand our point, or your head will stop working. A, eh? why would you think so? I am smart. If you say so. I am not convinced but I will pretend I am, for now. Alba mocked me before continuing. They will try to draw us out of the shallows. So we must stay here, closer to the coastal batteries. During our previous fights we obtained several heavy guns, our main hope. You are capable of fighting so I put you under Patricia's command. Her fast ships will engage the vanguard, and if they defeat it, we will have the advantage. A. Eh? For some time I was struggling to understand but then I thought about the maneuverability of those ships. Fast ships can disrupt the line formation of battleships, and give advantage to our inferior force. Then I will proceed to prepare. I headed to the exit, not without Patricia. A, eh? are you still suspecting me? I couldn't help barking. It is not about suspecting, foolish girl, it is about being ready. If you will be already prepared to set sail, then be so kind to do it as soon as you are ready. The more time we have, the better. I wish you two fair winds and following seas. Now that we were dismissed, I headed to my ship and bought the entire package of torpedoes. My purse got lighter but at least if I will be engaging some splinters, then why not hoard points to improve torpedoes? The pirate frigates and caravels were already at the roadstead and only needed to set sail. I made sure everything is prepared on my end. I guess we can go now. Whom do they follow? I pointed at the light force. They are on their own. I will tell you where to go, since we will be engaging before the others do. Now, anchor away. Patricia made a posture with an arm pointing to the horizon, and after I grumbled whatever. We started moving. Just as we exited the port, I started hearing pinging, ping, ping, ping. It was underwater, and very close to the port. Hey, Patricia, what are the chances of a sea monster being near a port? Are you stupid? 
Of course no sea monster would approach a port. They only attack single ships. Now I knew everything I needed to know. Wait, why are you turning? I said, head there. Are you even listening? I ignored her shouting, and prepared to give a warm welcome to the uninvited visitor. Splash boom while I was turning around to drop more depth charges. Pieces of wood started surfacing. I have no idea what we encountered but it was no longer a threat to think they would be so daring. P. Was it expected? W. What are you talking about? Patricia was not expecting me to hear her. I pointed at my ears. Ah, Benizio was experimenting with submersible boats. I never thought you would find one. P. I have ears everywhere. The sonar can also be considered one. I circled a few times around the island to make sure there are no more submarines, then we returned to the course, trying to catch up to the rest of the light force. V3CH26 Wooden phalanx of the seas 70 miles to the southwest of the pirate base, we were patrolling near a long island for an entire day and night. As Patricia explained, it is one of the possible directions of attack. During the patrolling we encountered only one ship, another lonely submarine. After we surprised the sub with a couple of far away depth charges, it retreated. My plan is to make the enemy fleet come here, which might eventually happen. The enemy showed up in the morning, as expected. We had seven frigates and two caravels, under the cover of a single destroyer. Against us were 17 frigates and 21 caravels. Those guys surely want us dead. I was looking at the approaching pennants through the binoculars. We were enough of a pain for them to risk everything. If mother is right, then the main attack should already be started. P, you said they want to draw us away? How could they already be at the port? They are not at the port, yet. We knew there would be spies in our ranks like we have ones in Benizio's, so we set sail to trigger the attack. P. A nice gamble you have. Life or death, nothing else. Patricia giggled, as if it is something normal. I couldn't help laughing nervously. Here it starts. Cure an army, holst to the Jolly Roger. At the Admiral's command I raised the flag, and the fleet started lining up for combat. We, on the other hand, started to approach. Bang 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 after a couple of salvos I achieved a hit on a frigate. The ship was damaged but did not withdraw. Meanwhile, the fleets were lined up and started closing in on each other. We were mostly ignored. Bang 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 despite my efforts we neither achieved significant damage, nor disrupted the enemy line formation. As the fleet centered the firing range, the first clouds of white smoke popped out. As the frigates fired, one of the enemy ships lost its sails and steered away. Even from afar I was seeing small pieces of ships fly out after being hit. The first broadside ended with rooting of one enemy but losing one of our frigates, and all the caravels. Bang 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 with my guns I managed to do severe damage to one of the ships, making it withdraw. As I shifted fire to a group of caravels that approached too close, I scored a hit. The caravel started smoking, and then exploded like a firework. The allies were not standing still. Two enemy frigates were sunk and one fled. Two more pirate ships headed down. As the ships approached to fire arms range, I sunk two more ships. The remaining frigates exchanged broadside shots. The pirates sunk one frigate and immobilized another, while Benizio sunk two frigates. After the sides suffered huge losses, the fleets separated and quickly withdrew from the area. Benizio lost ten vessels, some of which withdrew earlier, while we have only one battered frigate and ourselves. While I was turning the rudder to pursue, Patricia stopped my hands. We have a more important thing to do. Head back to the base. P. And what about that frigate? If the enemy returns, they are doomed. We caused significant damage, that should be enough of a breathing space. Return to the base at once. I wondered if it a good idea, after all the light ships will return, they will not return for a few hours. That's for sure. They need to lick their wounds and repair the holes. Move at your top speed, 
We need to return immediately. P. I. Captain. Even if the enemy was going to return, I am convinced enough they need more time to repair. The ship was accelerated to the maximum speed, and while we were heading back, I checked the stats. Ding you received three copper coins, two silver coins, 520 upgrade points IJN Kirin Army, DDL upgrade points, 47 torpedoes, 66 HP, 3676 high minus 98% damage control compensation minus 2% AU minus 83% 2507 nanometers 3 single turret increase caliber 0 200 dual gun turrets 0 400 15 dual torpedo mount wet heat increase caliber 0 100 improve mounts 0 250 improved propulsion, 0 500. By the time we arrived, the battle already started. The remaining light ships were engaging each other, while the battleships were sailing at a respectful distance. Only two battleships were an exception from the ongoing mayhem the Black Sail battleship, and a huge Benizio battleship. You have guts to show up. Patricia mumbled. What? Don't what? She pulled my ears. Bring us closer to the black demon. They are waiting for me. Nobody shot at us while we were sailing to the pirate battleship. I approached as close as I could, and Patricia jumped to the ship. She thrusted her sword into the side, and used it as a step to jump to the deck. Only after I separated from the battleship the action started, and I was in the middle of it. Four sisters no sixteen. All right, students. Choose a partner for yourself, and proceed to the workplaces. As soon as the teacher proclaimed, the class immediately paired up. New Jersey started irritating Mo, and they paired up. The only one who was abandoned was Iowa. I was standing just because I was waiting until that stupid Jersey finishes fooling around and picks me up. Whiskey, let's go? Yeah, why would you think I am going with you? She pointed at Mo and New Jersey which were chatting at one of the workplaces. Traitor. Don't worry, New Jersey just had something to discuss with Missouri. Let's go. Iowa was unusually persistent so I decided to follow her. You will be making cookies today Tilda. I bought this recipe at a local patisserie, and I want to test it before cooking it myself. Tilda. Start cooking Tilda. The handwork class teacher was as mercantile as ever. I will be adding the ingredients. Can you, please, mix them for me? Big suspended to pick something out of the cabinet. Click when I turned around to see what is clicked. I saw New Jersey hiding her camera. Not only she was not embarrassed for being spotted, she also waved me and gestured me to flip my skirt. Go die. You foo-foo Tilda. My little whiskey is so fierce today Tilda. N.J. You. Oh, damn. The skirt flipped from the wrong side. I. This battleship just grew. At least I protected the silly big sis from more pants shots. First you mix some eggs and flour Tilda, then you add some salt and sugar Tilda, and at last you pour in a lot of milk and mix it all together Tilda. You bake it and tar damn Tilda. Yeah, a few seconds later, the song was put on repeat by the freak. Big Sis' face lit up with red, and the freaks lit up too, with perverted pleasure. Bam there. 50 calories bullet made a perfect contact with the surface of smartphone, pass right through it, and then made its way through the wall. My phone? NJ, you deserved IT. I stuck out my tongue and returned to cooking. After the pastry was done we formed some cookies and put them into the oven. You foo foo Tilda. The cookies will be great Tilda. Yeah, click the shots R2 Tilda. NJ, go D. Before I could kill the pervert, my guns were lowered by Iowa. Don't sweat it. You know that she's hopeless. Yeah, still, I kept my eye on her. Just in case. After the cookies were baked. The teacher immediately started tasting them. What a nice cookie Tilda. Your ladyship will be a great lady in the future Tilda. Young sir, those cookies are more than fitting of a prospect night Tilda. 
and other stuff like that. Then the teacher approached Mo's table. Mo's since she was the only one cooking and not fooling around with the camera all the time. The teacher tasted one of the cookies. The expression was telling everything one need to know. G great J job. I know Tilda. By combining the primordial magic and hell's scorching flame, we made the ultimate cookies. These cookies can improve one's resistance to the forces of evil. Don't worry, since you are our comrade in arms, you can take them with you Tilda. Mo, W well, I I can't. S since they are our required for your. Don't worry, we'll just make more. Mo, I guess KN cookies are not the tastiest. At least she did not put in the Carolina Reaper sauce she had on the table. Finally, it was our turn. Let's see Tilda. The teacher prepared to grab a cookie but I glared at her. He he he. I am just tasting to make sure you made everything right. Don't worry. As big sister I made sure everything is made properly Tilda. Yeah, the teacher was left with nothing and I packed all of the cookies. I was worrying how to do it but no ideas crossed my mind. Don't worry, Whiskey. Just do it. I am sure everything will work out great Tilda. Yeah, if you say so. I entered the classroom and placed the bag on the school desk. I also placed a note, eat them, you jerk. And don't you dare forgetting me again. I exited the classroom. Good job Tilda. I am sure your love will reach her Tilda. Whatever this silly sister says. V3CH27. Sinking the armada the two fleets stopped circling around each other, and the long-barreled coastal guns opened fire. I hurried towards the allied fleet and hid behind their hulls. Bang 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 I measured the distance correctly and landed hits on a battleship. My high explosive shots were just a nuisance to it. I continued firing hoping to damage the fleet before the main engagement. My hits were not doing much but they damaged and softened the enemy for the main fleet. The engagement started with serious damage to the enemy. The battleships softened the enemy armada and the coastal batteries managed to sink two battleships. The first salvo of the enemy sunk neither of the ships but our forces were hit hard. Seven battleships and twelve galleons against four battleships and seven galleons. The situation was not in our favor, even with my assistance. Bang 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 I changed my tactic and started shelling the sails with AA rounds. When I no longer needed to hit the ship hulls. My accuracy increased tremendously. I even managed to immobilize two battleships. The allies were not lagging behind, and after two battleships emptied their broadside into an immobilized vessel, the enemy ship surrendered. Coastal batteries scored two vessels, a battleship and a galleon. It costed the pirates quite a lot to let the battleships approach. The pirates used their galleons. The smaller capital ships soaked in the cannonballs, and three of them were sunk. Meanwhile, because I immobilized three battleships, the other two separated from them. They sailed away, breaking the fire contact. We immediately initiated the pursue. Soon, the galleons surrounded the battleships from both sides to give me enough breathing space. Allied galleons soaked in both sides of the battleships to let me approach them. For one reason, Splash 2 torpedoes headed for the first battleship, Splash 2 more headed for the second one. I followed the pinging sounds until they reached the ships. Boom the second ship's bow was blown up. And she nose dived. Splash I launched the remaining torpedoes at the luckier first ship. Boom boom the chase ended with an unquestionable victory but not all of the enemy vessels were sunk. While I was returning, the allies sunk two more battleships but lost one galleon. Of all the ships only two were unscathed. The Black Sail battleship and the largest of Benizio battleships. Both of them were in the same place, and there were no traces of fighting. After all the enemy battleships were sunk, the remaining galleons lowered their flags and holstered white flags. Now was the time to intervene in the flagship's affairs. Twenty minutes ago, Patricia's poff as I jumped to the deck, I saw how the soldiers were hiding behind the ship's board. I rushed there and took cover. What's going on? My lady, she is here. The soldiers were covered in ashes, 
and a few bodies were covered with cloth. I peeked at the enemy deck. There were dozens of soldiers, all aiming their guns at us but neither of them shot at me. I got the grasp of the situation and stood up. More than half of my body was visible but neither soldier shot. I am here. I shouted and waited. Soon, a girl in golden cloak walked out to the deck. For a moment I was thinking who this blonde might be. Then, I walked along the ship. Meanwhile, Sacred Flower, the flagship of Benetian Navy, lowered a ramp for me to board them. At ease, people. I commanded my crew. It was not their fight. As I stepped on the flagship's deck, their soldiers bowed. We greet the shining moon of Benizio. I almost laughed after hearing this. How many years have passed? The girl approached me with a sword in scabbard in her arms. Long time no see, Patricia. She passed me the sword. I almost forgot your face, Veronica. I accepted the sword. I drew it out of the scabbard and swung it a few times to accustom myself. How is mother? Veronica approached me and attempted to hug. She is perfectly fine. I blocked her way with the sword. Her smiling mask faded immediately. You're no fun. I almost hoped you will remain the same blessed child. V, I have changed, unlike you. I took a stance and aimed for her throat. What a pity that you want to fight me, even though it is our first reunion since. V, Ping Ship Girl Dialogue Lines, Iowa, BB61, New Jersey, BB62, Announcement Disclaimer, What is written here is a fanfic of what would my ship girl's dialogue lines look like if they were in Azur Lane. The phrases were written in Azur Lane style and refer to some of Azur Lane characters. I don't own any rights to the game or its contents. Please. Don't sue me. New Jersey from here was designed way before her release in Azur Lane. It is my character and Yosta has no rights on this one. USS Iowa ship description. Iowa class battleship. Iowa, hull number 61. Self introduction. I am the first of the last battleships to be built. Iowa. During my service I navigated all of the seas and even had the honor of carrying the president to his important mission. If you feel like you need help, please, call for me. Receive. R. Are you commander? Iowa class battleship, Iowa, reporting in. Please, tell me how can I be of service. R. Sorry. I was a bit agitated about the new assignment. Log in. Welcome back. Why yes. The office is ready and all papers are sorted. The maids did it before me. View details, Kaiara. Co-commander, please, not before entering. I almost ashamed myself again. Main screen one, you foo foo Tilda, you need my help please, leave this task to big sis Tilda. Main screen two, my sisters, ah, they are the cutest beings in the universe Tilda. As long as they don't open their mouths. Main screen three, diplomacy. That is the most commendable endeavor. Still, I prefer the gunboat diplomacy above all. Normal touch, R? Yes, of course, I am ready. Special touch, www CCC Commander Rub, www T that is you you unbefitting for a big sis. Mission reminder, Commander. We have a new mission and it requires your utmost attention. Do it myself? Of course, mission complete. Commander. I brought the mission rewards. Mail reminder, Commander. You have a new mail. Read it myself. N no way. Return to port. Thank God. You return unscathed. Please, come inside. Big Sis already made you some tea tilde. Upset, Commander. Even I know that I am worth more than that. Stranger, I may be lacking in many aspects but please. Bear with me for the time being. R. I don't deserve your compliments. Friendly. Ha ha ha. And here I am, complaining about my life. And here are you, listening to me talking. Have I tired you? No? W. Wow. Uh. Thanks. Crush. You want me to behave like I do with my sisters? W. Would you really like me being a big sis? You're okay because it is when we are alone. Love Commander Tilda. 
Big Sis is here and is ready to rock Tilda. But of course I brought everything Tilda. Bento. Here it is Tilda. I am glad I can be of use to you, so please, bear with me Tilda. Promise. Uh. What? Ah. Uh, I. I mean. Do I really deserve it? So this is not a reward. You mean it? Why yes. 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 Yes and yes. Big Sis will be always taking care of you Tilda. Commission complete. The commission team has returned. I will go debrief them. Please wait for me Tilda. Enhancing complete. Iowa. Ready for action. Flagship fight. All hands. Man the stations. Victory. I. Have I really became an MVP? Wow. Defeat. I still need a bit of training. After all. Skills. Strike hard. Low HP. Whoa. whoa. Additional voice line 1. Sortie with at least one of, New Jersey, Missouri, Wisconsin, follow Big Sis and everything will be fine. I I know what I'm doing. Big Sis Iowa the Big Stick Task Force Escort. Increases this ship's FP and EVA by 5% for every Eagle Union ship in the fleet. Stacks with this ship's other skills. When this ship fires its main guns. 30% chance of slowing down all visible enemies. All main fleet ships of the fleet this ship is in get 10% increase to FP, battleships and battle cruisers, or 10% increase to avenue, carriers. All vanguard ships of the fleet this ships is in get plus 5 to EVA and plus 20 to AA. Range safety officer Iowa. Increases activation chance of barrage skills by 50% for. New Jersey, Missouri, Wisconsin does not have to be in the same fleet for every of her sister ships sorted. Gets 10% increase to FP every 30s has 50% chance to fire special barrage. Damage depends on the amount of sister ships sorted. USS New Jersey ship description Iowa class battleship, New Jersey, hull number 62. Self introduction I'm New Jersey. The best and strongest battleship of the Eagle Union Tilda. I carried on my shoulders so many wars that I'm feeling sick. Now that it's done, I'll be resting. I deserved it. Didn't I Tilda? Receive. Hey Tilda. New Jersey's here. I'm the best battleship of the Eagle Union and now I'm in your fleet. Cool. Ain't it? Now, tell me where I can find a room for myself and I'll be going Tilda. Sorty. Nah. It's such a pain. Log in. You returned. Darn it. I was hoping for some more R&R. &R. View details. R. Commander. Come here. I want to ask you something Tilda. Who of those cuties is prettier? Just give me your opinion Tilda. Main screen 1. Life is S. Super low tier game. Main screen 2. You ask my permission to mess with my sisters? Ha ha ha. Go ahead Tilda. I like to mess with them too. Main screen 3, Faye Ian. I'll help you. Stamp stun so I am done working. Normal touch. You wanna read some? Sure thing. Take whatever Dujin Chai lies around. Special touch. Uh, what? Runs out, Iowa. Commander found something there. Rub. Ha 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 Tilda. So that's what the 2D girls feel when I tap on M Tilda? Mission reminder. Mission. Here. Go do it while I'm playing. Mission complete. Oh. The rewards are here? Nah. I don't need them. Well. If there is a disc with another gouge then I'll take it. Sure thing. Mail reminder. You're such an old styled person. Commander. To receive mail. Were you not connected to the chat? Return to port. Here you are. I knew you'd come back in one piece. Have you brought me cola? You were not going out to buy me cola. Upset. I'm hickey neat and I'm proud of that. Go away, you know me, stranger. Life's such a bad game. Ha ha. Okay. Come here. Let's play. Friendly. You think you'll unlock her route before I do? No way. Commander Tilda. I'm pro. Crush. Ha ha ha. That's funny Tilda. Wait a darn moment. How did we end up outside of my room? Love. Don't you even try. Commander. I will never agree that life is not a bad game. B but I can agree that sometimes the characters are nice. Promise. Wow Tilda. You sure have weird tastes Tilda. To think you'd do this for me. 
that you'd try to bring me out of my room for the sake of your love tilde. M-H-M? Ah. I'm fine with it. Sure thing, do whatever you want, as long as you stay by my side and keep me company tilde. Commission complete. The Cola team has returned. Enhancing complete, I am the Black Dragon, feel my roar. Flagship fight, let's do this. Victory. What's up, guys? Have you thought you could win against me Tilda? Defeat, TCH. Hey, guys, leave me for a bit, I'll go kick some skills. This salvo is dedicated to dot 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 Tilda. Low HP, I'm taking hits. Additional voice line 1, sorty with Wisconsin, whiskey Tilda. Come here my cutie pie Tilda. Additional voice line 2, sorty with Iowa, I, don't sweat it. Just fire. Additional voice line 3, sorty with Missouri, I'm the strongest. And it'll always be like that. Battlefield artist the Black Dragon Glory Seeker. Produce dudes and she's at a stead pace of 1 DPM. Every 1 minute gets 5% FP and hit rate increase. The time counter continues in the next battles of the sortie this ship participates in. Stacks infinitely. Every time this ship sinks an enemy ship, increases RLT by 1%, can be stacked up to 10 times. When this ship's HP falls below 20%, gives 25% increase to FP for 10s and then heals this ship for 10% of its maximum HP, activates once per sortie. Dedicated salvo every 30s with 50% chance fires special barrage. When this ship fires the barrage, makes a comment on a random ship girl's appearance. Every comment can be used only one time. If the comment is used, increases critical hit chance by 100%, and increases FP by 50%. If Wisconsin is in the same fleet as this ship, the barrage does not use commenting. If the barrage does not hit an elite enemy. Fires a second barrage. V3CH28. Duel of the fates before I could understand what happened, my sword was blocked by a small knife. I am more than glad that I am smarter than this. If I did not trust my instincts, I would be dead by now. My my, what a treacherous sister I've got. To think that my flesh and blood would try to cut me in half just after we met again. I did not let her finish and started to swing again and again. The sword was coming at Veronica from all sides but she did not even try to be serious. It would have been funny if this bee became serious right from the start. Why don't you try to fight, sister? Is there something bothering you? Can something even bother you, cold-blooded reptile? She only laughed it off. A simpleton like you would never understand. Then, let me play with you. Since you wish it so much Tilda, my dear sister Tilda. She parried another strike and leapt right below the blade, aiming the knife at my throat. In a moment I collected myself and kicked her with my leg. We are separated by many things, and being ridiculously good swords master is one of them. Ha 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 Tilda. You made some progress Tilda. She was only amused. I kicked her a meter away but she was still within the strike distance both mine and hers. The longer she stood in place, the more tensed I was. Be it your way. Veronica finally put her hand on the hilt. Boom something exploded nearby and she was distracted. I must finish it with one strike. I used all known enhancement abilities and flashed at her, with the sword aimed at her neck. Even a monster would die after being decapitated. Not amusing. She was already behind my back. Gently slapping me with her hand. She was yet to become serious. G-H-A? Try better. Mother must have spent all of her fortune, didn't she? Veronica continued walking around me, waiting for me to catch up. Just die, you be. Ping clack ping she blocked my combination with the same knife. But now I had a chance. Loyalty of steel. Shatter the sword cut through the weakened knife and headed straight to my surprised sister's head. Guar? I fell on my knees, after something hit my stomach. Too slow. Too boring. Veronica stared in the distance. I had a second to catch the sight of what is going on. While I was standing up, the fleets were burning. The Benetian pride, 
120 gun battleships were sinking one after another. Our fleet was sinking too, and only one ship was looking out of place, maneuvering between the splashes of water. Pretty, right? V, what the hell are you raving about? About that girl. She is the reason I did not turn you into a sponge. Do you know why Tilda? Veronica's smile was suggesting that the lunatic found the new prey. What, are you in love with her Tilda? Before I could continue mocking her, I was sent flying. Good answer, since you can be teasing me, then you are ready for round two. V, I was already seeing blurs at the edge of my view. The fight is approaching its end. No wonder, lunatic since the birth, lunatic forever. Slap you are no worse. If only you were a bit smarter, further might have paid you more attention. V, go to hell. You be. I took a stance and waited for her next move. My my, little Patricia learned how to swear. Our little angel had her halo shattered by baddies Tilda. With each of her mocks I was fueled more and more. I may die but I only hope I take her to hell with me. Pink Lang there was an opening but Pink she blocked my strike with the rapier. At long last she started to become serious. I have to admit, you are very good. Very very good. V. Clang Ping. But being a very good girl, does not mean you are perfect. V. Shatter she poked the middle of my sword with the rapier. The master fencer. The noblest of children. The genius. The invincible, the radiant sun, the firstborn, as the pieces of metal flew around, seemingly with the speed of the leaves flying, I saw what I wanted to see. The narrow blade of the rapier shattered, scattering its pieces, and leaving its master defenseless. I put all of my remaining strength and mana in the single strike, the one that headed right towards the shocked face of this monster. Ship Girl Dialogue Lines, Missouri. BB-63, Wisconsin, BB-64, Announcement Disclaimer, What is written here is a fanfic of what would my ship girl's dialogue lines look like if they were in Azur Lane. The phrases were written in Azur Lane style and refer to some of Azur Lane characters. I don't own any rights to the game or its contents. Please, don't sue me. USS Missouri Ship Description, Iowa Class Battleship, Missouri. Hull number 63, self-introduction, I am Missouri, the strongest battleship of the Eagle Union Tilda. Back then I even suppressed an entire nation just by arriving, forcing them to surrender under my guns. While my achievements are limited, my potential is untangible. Receive, and here the fate has led me to this port. Tremble, mortal, for me. The strongest and the most powerful battleship of all times has arrived to your court. Since my destiny calls for it, I shall let you use my powers, for now. Please, take care of me. Commander Tilda, log in. Welcome back, the work's waiting. View details. I call for you. A great fire. Listen to my command and obey it to the last word. R, Commander? Nothing much. I was just rehearsing. Main screen 1, you foo Tilda. R, I'm just thinking about the new proposal to be filmed. Main screen 2, why am I the strongest? Of course because I am Missouri, the great fire demon. Main screen 3, ha ha, you want my autograph? Sure. Why would everyone want it? Normal touch, you call for me? What do you need from the great fire demon, mortal? You want me to help you sort the papers? Sure thing. Special touch. Why you are you quite be brave. For someone who is about to become ashes. Rub. How dare you, mortal. Ah, uh, I had a leaf stuck. Thanks. Commander Tilda. Mission reminder. The cruel fate has called upon us. In those troubling times we must. In short, a new mission was issued. Care to take a look? Mission complete. Nice one. Commander. One day we will cleanse all of the evil spawns, with the great fire. Mail reminder. Hey, Commander. Can you imagine this? I've got so many letters from my fans that they are yours. My my, what a busy soul you are. Return to port. Remember, Wayfarer, that every step you make, no matter how hard it is, brings you closer to the end goal. Also, here are some drinks. Upset. 
don't come near me, evil spawn, or else, stranger, you dare coming here, mortal, then bow to me, to the great fire demon, who fights the evil, the eye patch and the staff, what, you don't like them, killjoy, friendly, and again you come, mortal, do thee wanteth to hear mine wisdom, w well, I am great fire demon, so of course I am wise, need some advice, great, come here, let's talk about it while sharing drinks, crush, r, few, i, commander, please don't budge in as you please, why am I not talking like a demon, r, don't worry, I just need to help big sis with her problems, ha 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 tilde, yeah, who would support my silly big sis if not me, the great fire demon tilde, love, it's, it's a bit unusual to not have to worry about my appearance, ha ha, well, yes, I am happy that I don't have to act unreliable all the time, just don't go bragging around that you have such a reliable comrade, what tilde, aren't you gonna be the great fire demon's comrade in arms tilde, promise, ha ha, I can already see big sis crying tears of blood tilde, her weirdo lil sis is getting proposed to, I mean, yeah, I'm more than happy, commander tilde, let's do our best together tilde, commission complete, not all return from the fights but those who do, no, no, I mean, everybody's alive and well, enhancing complete, it all is for the greater cause, now, mortal, let's fight some evil, shall we, flagship fight, girls, let's party hard, till they all wet their pants tilde, victory, so foolish, my fiends, to think weaklings like you would be able to stand against the great fire demon, defeat, I, if I were to take off the eye patch, then my powers would have burned you all but, B but it's not the time yet, skills, oh, Greer fire, listen to my command and burn my enemies, low HP, holy moly, time to get serious here, additional voice line 1, sorty with Iowa, don't worry, big sis, I'll support you in any way I can, additional voice line 2, sorty with at least one of, York, Jamaica, Z36, let's rise and fight the evil spawns, to victory, purging fire glory of the demon kin savior of the universe, every 30s, has 50% chance to fire a special barrage, the barrage's damage depends on the level of this skill, for every eagle union ship in the fleet, increases this ship's FP and AA by 5%, must not have Sigura Empire ships in the fleet, for every Sigura Empire ship in the fleet, increases this ship's HP by 1% and road by 5%, must not have Eagle Union ships in the fleet, if no other ships present in the main fleet, increases this ship's stats by 1% every tens of the combat. The skills effects stack for the duration of the sortie. If the vanguard also consists of one ship, increases both ships stats by 5% instead every tens. The demon's hellfire every one minute with a chance of 50% fires three salvos of three MK23 shells. The targets receive critical hits, ignoring all targets defenses and this ship's damage debuffs. If this ship is sorted with any other Iowa class battleship, has 10% chance of replacing this skills attack with the sister ship's skills attack. USS Wisconsin Ship Description, Iowa class battleship, Wisconsin, Hull number 64 Self Introduction, I am Wisconsin, the latest of the Eagle Union's battleships, and so what? I still participated, didn't I? I may be an oversized AA light cruiser but still receive, huh? Are you the commander? I am Wisconsin, the proud battleship of the Eagle Union. Nice to meet you. Now, stop staring at me and let's work. Why should I be reminding you about work? Log in, you are late. Ha, huh? it's my problem that I arrived earlier. You, you, view details, look as much as you want. There is nothing I lack. Battle Stars, you, main screen 1, TCH, here's your T, I have no idea why you would want me to make it, you like it when I make you T, go die, main screen 2, what I'm thinking of my sisters, 
None of your business. I don't hate or like them. I'm not blushing. You idiot. Main screen 3. Ha? Huh? No way in hell. I it's not like I am completely against making you a bento. Normal touch. Keep your arms to yourself, will you? Special touch. You. Why you? Go die. Rub. W who did tell you that you can just pat my head? W who did tell you to stop patting my head? Mission reminder. I received new missions data. Huh? I know myself that I did a good job. Huh. Mission complete. D don't praise me all of a sudden. I may have brought the rewards but it won't make me the one who does the related paperwork. Mail reminder. You've got a new mail. Not my problem. You idiot. You have eyes. So read it yourself. Return to port. G G G G G G. Whatever. Upset. What do you need? You freak commander. Stranger. No matter what you think, I'll not be easily swayed. And don't think that saying I'm cute is going to help it. Friendly. Are you an idiot or what? If you keep saying I'm cute it won't make me happy. No way in hell it would. Crush. Just why do you keep coming here? It's just, I am a bit shabby. Whatever you say, I'm less capable than those three. If you have time for this nonsense, then go make yourself busy, idiot. Love, it's not like I was following you. I just felt a bit happy when you supported me. Huh? You heard it wrong. Why would I want to? I it's not like I am completely against spending time with you. Just do whatever you want. Promise. W whatever. D do what you want. I'm s surely n not happy t to hear those words. Am I smiling? Commander. You idiot. Go die a thousand times tilde. Commission complete. The commission has returned. Enhancing complete. With this. With this I'll be able to. Never mind. Flagship fight. I I t take co command. Yeah. Victory. I came. I saw. I conquered. Defeat. Big sisters, help me. Skills, go die. You idiot. Low HP, scary, 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 scary. Additional voice line 1, sorty with at least one of, Iowa, Missouri. I'm a big girl, I don't need your help. Additional voice line 2, sorty with New Jersey. You, stay a few thos and feet away from me. Additional voice line 3. Sortie with at least five of Eagle Union, no carriers must be present. Now that's my chance to escape the escort duties tilde. Forward for freedom and oversized swatter unbending will. For every Eagle Union ship in the same fleet as this ship, increases Eagle Union ships FP, Avenue and AA by 5%. When this ship destroys an aircraft, increases AA by 50% for tens. If sorted with any Iowa class battleship, this ship gets 10% increase to EVA and 3 to speed. If at least one carrier is present in the fleet, additionally gets 5% to AA and FP. An easily flustered battleship every 30s with 50% chance fires a special barrage which does critical damage to the hit enemies. If sorted with New Jersey. Instead fires three salvos of the main guns with guaranteed critical hit and decreased spread range, ignores damage reductions and shields. Has 10% chance of dealing 5% HP damage to New Jersey. Only two ships remaining. Princess Patricia doesn't count. Nobody even remembers her existence, me included. V3CH29 The destiny calls as the sword cut through the air. I felt something. Something was wrong. Instead of piercing the crazy BS face, the blade stopped. Not too bad. You even surpassed my expectations. Still, try harder. Veronica caught the blade with two fingers and let go of it right when I pulled it back. Why don't you just kill me already, instead of this play? My blood was already boiling from this arrogance. This is not up to you to kill me. Neither it is up to me to kill you. Our destiny is different. V, stop this bulls. From since you are such a fatalist. I just understood. That we are nothing more than pieces. She again looked in the distance. The gunfire has settled, and the remnants of the fleets were disengaging. Only one ship was heading here. 
The time has come. The destiny is nigh. Veronica picked up the shattered remnants of her rapier and started casting the restoration spells. I could have tried to kill her right here, right now, but I know better than this. This monster is not interested in me. The steel ship approached, and then disappeared below the side of the battleship. Only the tops of its masts and structure were visible. Then, something jumped on the deck. Cure an army's puff as I landed on the deck. I saw Patricia and Veronica. Veronica was holding her rapier and looking at me, while Patricia was standing in a combat stance, and aiming her sword at me. Who would have thought that pirates are such a scum? Well, they are scum but to think that they would try to kill you now. Veronica glanced at Patricia, who was flustered. Just what happened here? I looked at the two of them. Patricia surely was not in the best shape. Nothing but a family reunion. Sweetie Tilda. Veronica approached me and hugged with one arm. The other one was holding the rapier. Who would have thought that you know this scumbag? Patricia was ready to strike and was not intent on backing down. She clearly is a threat. She lusts for power but I cannot defeat her alone. It is for her own good, help me. Veronica whispered. Clash and in the next second the blades crossed. Whatever this bee tells you, don't believe her. P, it's funny to hear this from you. Veronica was clearly cornered, and soon the sword would cut her. Ping I parried Patricia's blade and tried to disarm her. She dropped the sword as soon as I gripped it. You? Why would you do this? P, is it even necessary for you to fight? I had no words to describe what was going on. She just whispered something and you trust her, like a loyal dog. P, try better. Sister, the destiny is calling for us, and its decision is approaching. V, what do you mean by destiny? Don't listen to this lunatic's raving. The disarmed Patricia tried to fist fight Veronica, interrupting the explanation. Veronica easily avoided her attacks but was reluctant to use the rapier. The picture was weird but I was yet to decide how to stop the fight. Stop it. I just stood behind both of them. Hit Patricia couldn't stop her fist in time, and hit my cheek. Yeah ugh. The fist hit me, and Patricia started whimpering. Even though I made from foil plated cardboard, I still should be a ship. It doesn't even hurt. That's what I call hits like a girl. My thinking of how strong I actually am, was interrupted by Patricia. Watch out. I turned my head. Veronica was standing there and giggling. My poor Patricia is still such a crybaby Tilda. V, I glared at Patricia, whose face became pale. Watch out. She continued shouting but I won't be caught twice. Then, I felt something. My mouth started filling with blood, and I felt cold. I forced my numb head to look down, and I saw a narrow blade, sticking out of my chest. Why? For it is our destiny. Veronica pulled the rapier out and I fell. It was already hard to breathe, but now I was drowning in my own blood. S.me.e.o. Her.y.let. O. L. Y. O. V. Then, I lost consciousness. Four sisters no seventeen. I was relaxing after another week of studying. I worked hard and now I relished in the fruits of my labor. This is the paradise I'm looking for. Whatever you say. Whiskey enjoyed the lemonade and the pool with me. Iwu is too busy with another postponed indefinitely but the time runs out task, and to unshell New Jersey one would need to spend their entire mana. The two of us had everything at our disposal. A small barrel of Iwu's lemonade eaten, a scorching sun, a hot air, and a cold pool. The academy's pool is usually reserved for Plessons, and even the highest level nobility students can't access it without a special permission but it all changes when it comes to us. The pool is our fiefdom, and we have an absolute rule over it. The first thing we did after arriving here was occupying this body of water for our purposes. Initially we just did it for the sake of sailing here but then Miss Lazy Bones rediscovered the leisure swimming. I wish we had some pork. We I'd rather have some beef. And here we go again. To hell with your beef. We eat it every time we have a barbecue. 
Can't you at least buy some other meat? Wait, no way. The beefsteak is the sacred tradition of our family. This is the first time I hear about it. We, even though both of us know that this is the dead end discussion, it was the matter of honor. What the two of you are doing here? We were interrupted by someone shouting from the entrance. I exchanged glances with Whiskey and we both silently agreed that we have no desire to turn around and look. Still, I yielded to my little sister. I lifted my head off the deck chair and turned to the side, to look at the unexpected irritator. There stood the platinum blonde, showing off an armband and ready to shout judgment to death you know. R, don't care about her. I returned to my business. Since this nobody has nothing to do with me, how dare you to ignore me. PB, come on. I don't give a. Before I could end the phrase, my mouth was covered by whiskey. Don't you dare swearing here. This is a respectable side story, so censor your words. Wi- Mum. Okay, fine. Now let go of me. The platinum blonde approached us and started nagging so I used the trump card. Who are you to lecture me? I am part of the disciplinary corps. So you must obey me. PB, how funny. To think a troublemaker like you would become a disciplinary committee member would be the same as if a certain someone became a member of moral committee. Ha 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 ha. The laughing from my side was only the confirmation of it. The blonde's face twitched but she was still standing here. Why would I not be able to join the committee? Only the pure nobles can ensure the discipline in this mishmash. PB, and so what? So I am going to ensure nobody breaks the rules here. Starting with you. PB, don't point fingers at me. It's rude. She quickly withdrew the finger. You two keep on doing your stuff but I'll be swimming. Bye. Wit splash while Whiskey was cosplaying a submarine. We continued glaring at each other. What did I even break here? Don't you see where you are? The pool is closed for the commoners. She pointed at the entrance. Where were so many restriction signs that we always laughed at it? And? Uh, you really have no idea? She was confused. Go ask the principal if the Iowa sisters can't be using this place 24-7. What does this 24 by 7 mean? PB, just, just go ask him, and stop bothering us for no reason. The girl already headed to the exit but then she stopped and ran back. Wait, I can't let you off like this. PB, why are you so keen on causing us trouble? You don't know? The royal family is going to be enrolling the crown prince and his fiancée here. PB. And how does it concern us and our pastime? You are causing troubles and affect the... PB. Brilliant. Go bother someone else. Or. You aim to curry a favor of... The girl's face became red and she finally ran away. Sigh whiskey. I'm joining. Boom. V3CH30. From the dead ARGH. K H A K H A K H A. I gasped but opened my eyes. When I looked around, I was in the destroyer's bridge, as if nothing happened. Despite the wobbling of my legs, I reached a window and saw that I am near the pirate lair. But the ships were stationed as usual. I hobbled to another side of the bridge and saw a battleship right by my side. I checked the ship. The hull was fine and barely suffered any damage. The weapons too were okay. The only thing that was not normal is the engine. It was completely cold. If I was to set sail right now, I would be able to do so, in two days at least. I went to the deck. A second later, I was hit by a seagull which did not expect me to cross its way. Hey, little guys, watch out where you're flying. As soon as I shook off and captured the perpetrator, all of the seagulls took off and started to circle above the ship. I put the captive under my arm and went to the bow, where most of the seagull's commotion was directed. There I saw Patricia, fishing. She immediately turned round and started grumbling. Those damned birds refused to eat, and they already sent in a couple of storms. At long last their breadwinner has arrived. I. It was really confusing to see you disappear and reappear here. 
If only I could have strangled that bee. P. Don't fish here. Also, why are you on my ship? How cold of you. This ship started drifting away after you get it. So we had to tie it to the black demon while we were working. I checked the commanding room and saw you there, intact. Of course, I had to stay and make sure nothing would happen to you. Patricia started waving her arms and almost hit a seagull with the fishing rod. Understood. I will go report to Alba. Anything else? I really didn't feel like talking to anyone. I jumped off the ship and headed to the coast. While there was nothing to do, I checked the stats. Ding you received two copper coins, five silver coins, three gold coins, three fifty upgrade points, hits, sixty-six upgrade points, firing, three hundred upgrade points, three torpedo hits, one point zero modifier, IJN Kirin Army. DDL upgrade points 13 torpedoes 06 HP 2342 high -98% damage control compensation -2% AU -63% 2341 nanometers 4 single turret increase caliber 0200 dual gun turrets 0400 15 dual torpedo mount Prototype Oxygen, High Explosive, Increase Caliber, 0 100 Improved Mounts, 0 250 Improved Propulsion, 0 500 Depth Charge Mount, Stern Rails Plus Y Guns, Depth Charge Type, Variable Fuse, ASW Mortar, 0 50 Proximity Fuse, 0 50 I poured all my upgrade points into improvements, still I wonder what high explosive means, at the coast I saw almost no people, only occasional purple coated pirates, near Alba's hut I was stopped, her ladyship is not expecting visitors, can you state your intentions? The guards were not showing hostility so I answered cordially, Curan army returned to report, I am from that ship, I pointed at my ship, the guards looked at me and one of them headed to the hut. He knocked and glanced inside, a moment later he gestured to come. When I entered the hut, there were no fireworks, no screaming fans, and no champagne. Alba was just seating by a small table and writing. I have no idea how you came back from the dead. And don't you tell me about miracle, I am not going to believe. Eh, then I will not be telling anything. Are there any assignments for me? I want to go away. She looked at me for a minute but then answered, We sacrificed all of our fleet, and Benizio is still standing. I shall not stop you from privateering their convoys, or sinking anything that sails under their flag. You are absolutely free to go and fight. A. Eh? Understood. One more question. How did you end up with those two sisters at each other's throat? For what reason should I be answering? Alba stopped writing and glared at me. Even though she disliked the topic, I continued pressing her. If I am to continue working with Patricia, I should know what is going on. Ha, huh? do you really think the pirates were this numerous? If I remained there, I would have hunted down every last one of them. I just understood that neither Patricia, nor I would have future with that man. Satisfied. She was angry but I asked one more question, before her patience ran out. Then what about Veronica? I heard you became close with her. That would explain your impertinent curiosity. That child was different. She was not like her sister, she was weird. After we ended up enemies, their relations were severed. I did not pry further. I will pick up Patricia and head out, if you allow me to. Of course, tell Patricia to come. I will instruct her. Your ship will be transferred under her command. As the new part of our fleet, you are promoted to captain, and are allowed to have your own subordinate crew and bear the pirate flag as your own. Now, go. Alba personally pushed me out of her hut and slammed the door. Ding the stats screen opened by itself. Destroyer squadron. Second ship. No ship commissioned. Third ship. No ship commissioned. Fourth ship. No ship commissioned. Fifth ship, no ship commissioned. Ships available, 
Kuro Nami class, one platinum coin, a Kazuki class, one gold coin, Keijuru class, one silver coin, Minakei's class, one copper coin. Four sisters no eighteen. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. I was standing in front of the gates, waiting for the newcomers. I greeted more than 30 people by now but I'm yet to become accustomed to it. I memorized the entire speech, and even some additional words in case the usual speech does not suit the case. I know every nook and granny the newcomers should visit, I know every class senior, and every class room. I can find any teacher at any given time and help the students with any issue they encounter during the first week of studying in the academy. But I am yet to overcome one issue. A carriage with yet another family crest has stopped by the main gates, and a lackey opened the door. Two people, a boy and a girl, stepped down from the carriage and approached me. I waved them in an automatic motion I repeated again and again. Hello, are you? The boy approached me and waved back. Hello, I am Iowa. I was assigned to Begito Day. Please feel free to ask him anything. K.H. Are you the new students? Please, follow me. I want to disappear. Right this instant. It's alright, Mississippi. Take a deep breath. Now, exhale. The boy's attitude was what I needed the most. I would have fainted from embarrassment if he scolded me. I led the newcomers throughout the academy until we reached the dormitories. We are at the dormitories plaza. All of the dormitories are connected to this place. Please, bear in mind that visiting another gender's dorms is strictly prohibited. Even if. The girl tried to raise an objection. No if. Even the teachers cannot break this rule. The plaza exists for this very reason. Thank you, Miss Iowa. Your guidance is the most helpful. You have my sincere gratitude. This boy is so well educated. If only I immediately turned around. What is wrong? The boy shook my shoulder but I was too busy searching. It is rude to turn away from the people talking to you. I ignored the girl's objections, since she is the victim here. Finally, my eyes came upon a curtained window, where was a small gap. I glared at the gap and showed my fist. The gap disappeared. When I turned around, I saw the girl glaring at me, and the boy calming her down. My apologies, miss. If you ever come across a flat girl in a cloak, hoodie, then please, don't hesitate shouting and calling for help. Come on. Who do you think I am? I received a radio telegram the next second. You know yourself who you are. Have some shame, or at least some restraint. Buoy Tilda, kill Joinine Tilda. I showed the window a finger gun. The radio telegraph went silent immediately. The newcomers were a bit embarrassed by my actions. I failed again. The evening was calm and pleasant. The cold breeze and a cup of lemonade were everything I needed to relax. Kai Vibration I checked the phone. There was a photo of Pansu. Just how are you doing this? Doing what? The newcomer boy approached me and sat nearby. My little sister is just killing me. Something is wrong? Do you need help? I hurried to clear the misunderstanding. No, no, it's just, my little sister done another lewd thing. I wish I could turn into dust and be blown away. You surely have it hard, miss. I couldn't help smiling. I surely do. Speaking of which, we are yet to get acquainted. Ah. Indeed, we are. I am. The boy introduced himself as the crown prince of this kingdom. Of course. I was not surprised too much. The four of us spoke to the king more than once. We even made a demand to supply us with everything we needed. For example, lemons. The tea is prohibitively expensive but the lemons are not. With my special recipe I can make the beverages for those three at any given time. So. I am not surprised. That's it. I shall be going. Enjoy your evening, miss. The crown prince bid farewell and I was left with my sister's mischief. I started searching for earphones to listen to some music. Here you are. Wah. I looked up and saw the newcomer girl glaring at me for no reason. Uh, miss. 
Do you need something? Scary. Don't you feign ignorance? How dare you? I was still lost. What? You have no excuses for your inexcusable actions? I will see to it, that you will be. As the girl continued talking, her chest was groped from behind. Kaiawa? CPF, soft. I already knew who did it. The girl freed from the grasping hands of New Jersey, and slapped her. Ya yeah, uh, uh. The cheek was perfectly fine but the palm was not. So, what's up? Why are you shouting at my big sis? NJ, she, she, she dared seducing my husband. CPF, I facepamed. V3CH31. Too empty for comfort bang 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 before a Benetian frigate could turn its side towards me. I fired AA shells at its sails and thus deprive it of the maneuverability. Take this. Are you always so full of yourself? Don't forget, they have a pair of cannons in the back too. As Patricia said, they have some weapons. Boom boom we were straddled, and small fountains of water shot from where the cannonballs hit. I returned the courtesy. Bang 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 100 mm armor piercing shots went straight through the wooden hull without exploding. The consecutive shots were high explosive. Bang right after the guns were silenced. A small cloud of smoke appeared from the top of the ship's main structure. Bang 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 a couple of bullets ricocheted from the windows. When the ship lost its fighting power, the crew armed themselves for combat. Boo 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 bum boo 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 bum I shredded the attacking defenders with AA machine guns, and after the frigate went silent, I asked Patricia. That should be it? Not yet. They did not surrender. Can you fire a couple more shots? She peeked in the windows from behind a metal construction. Fire guns, I sending presents. Bang 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 after a couple of hits, the frigate started rising white flag. Near Stilda. Good job. With this our fleet should have even more vessels. Patricia was so happy that she even praised me. I might have wondered where Veronica is, and what happened, but for now I have to focus on more immediate results. The war is not over and the pirates are outnumbered three to one. If Benetian navy was not scattered around in its colonies, then the pirates would not be enjoying the Caribbean. They failed many of their tasks and now require new ships. No dry docks, no shipyards, and a lot of ships sailing around waiting to be captured. Patricia, do you know the proportion of captured ships in the pirates navy? There was nothing to talk about while we towed the prize back so Patricia was the only way to entertain myself. All but two. Why are you asking? Did you not know that curiosity killed the cat Tilda? P. Well, there is nothing to do so I just try to entertain myself. Not that I have anybody to talk to properly. Ha, huh? sorry that I am not the most talkative type, perhaps you've enjoyed that BS attention? Maybe you want me to be skinning you, just like she did? P, I was just mumbling, don't get mad all of a sudden, I am insulted here, and then I am wrong? Once again, the conversation ended in us remaining away from each other. Despite all of the hardships, and slow steaming. We returned to the base and passed the prize to the pirates. While we were docked and had nothing to do, I went to the pub to search for people. Willing to serve aboard, the bartender poured me a pint of ale and I started listening to the conversations. Yeah, and I never heard back from him. He just disappeared, as if. He still owes you? Whenever you need help. Bro, my guys will goo. Bulls. He must have stopped somewhere at a colony and stocked supplies. No way he made it to the west. Dash man. I witnessed it with my own eyes. You can't forge stuff like that. Dot. I mean, he really doesn't know when to quit. That a hole doesn't pay the crew and hoards everything for himself. Gotcha. One moment, and I was already by the table. What's up, men? Somebody owes to your homies? Pfft. Stop it beast. This stupid accent is too much. Tilda. A grey bearded pirate and his friends started laughing. I have a ship but I lack a crew. You get me? I went right in with my offer. Go away, girl. You don't even have money to pay anyone. 
it's that lady who pays for everything you drink here, I'm not going to sell out my pals for the sake of them starving. Pirate, then how about me making them this offer? It's not like they would lose anything. Maybe. Still, you're way too sudden. Go do something for her ladyship, maybe she will find a crew, willing to work for free. Pirate, can we? No, bring me something cool. And then we'll be talking. I understood that the crew would be too much for me to ask. Still, I have some gold and so I can buy a destroyer. I checked my account and cried. Then, I checked the port screen. Docked in port, allied refuel and repair, one silver one X torpedo, one gold I grit my teeth and bought repairs and torpedoes, afterwards I cried. I have one gold left, and it is barely enough to buy the entire squadron. Total parsimony is a must. Four sisters know 19. I looked at the wall clock, then at the desk clock, then again at the wall clock, then again at the desk clock, and again at the wall, and again at the desk. NG, are you even listening? To think you would. Iowa was chastising me by mercilessly making me sit on my knees and telling me what I did wrong. I looked at the clocks. She was nagging me for the entire morning. It is already lunchtime and I feel hungry. Can I go now? I'm kind of hungry. Just what did I do wrong? Yeah, New Jersey, just how? How? You surpassed yourself yesterday. To think you would do something lewd to a newcomer, the same day she arrived. Yeah, now it will be. You mustn't do such things to girls, you must not do such things to girls. Yeah, not only do you dirty your own rep but also make a bad example to your sisters, NG. Not only you dirty your own reputation, you also show your little sisters a bad example. Wow, it stepped away from the usual pattern. You must reflect on your actions and avoid doing such bad things in the future. You must reflect on your actions, and please, at last, stop doing such things in the future. Yeah, relax, sis. I'm not going to be. Palm a palm hit my head. Silence and stop pouting. Yeah, come on, I. You know that I must be doing this. Pom ha. I know the drill, okay? You, Ark, New Jersey, you are irredeemable. What if Wisconsin, or God save us, Missouri start doing this? What are we going to do? Yeah, but, Mommy, I will save the day once again, right? Pom a a a. At least show some remorse, will you? Yeah, fine, fine. Let's go. I'm starving Tilda. Go ahead. I will be cleaning this pig pen. Iowa went to the new cache. I thought I hid the cleaning utensils so well that even she wouldn't be able to find them but then again. It's big sis Iowa. I arrived to the restaurant. The local analogue of a school cafeteria. You're late. Was big sis scolding you again? Mo was busy consuming a dish but even that did not stop her from hugging me. She slid aside and I sat on the same bench. Of course she was. What did you do now? Mo. I just took a shot. The new girls. Ah, that explains it. Did you really establish a new record? Like, looting a newcomer the same day she arrived? The Stop New Jersey League has already written a protest against you. The principal is going to scold you too. Mo. Ha. Let me have a piece of steak. I took a bite from Mo's piece of meat and headed to hear another nagging. After the principal was done telling me about morals, I was free to go. On my way back I saw the newcomer girl. Hiya. What's up Tilda? She turned around and made an amusing expression. Carl pervert. CPF. All of the students around us glanced at the scene and returned to their business. Come on, I don't bite Tilda. Let's hang out, shall we Tilda? I hugged the girl from the side and started leading her away. No way. I am not going with you. CPF, you're no fun. Fine. I'll click. Go then. Call out if you need myself. Tilda. I entered my room and headed to the haven of calmness. I should finish clearing. Insert a girl's name S root today. The large hard seven loaded and the desktop appeared. Kyra? There were three icons. The computer. The bin, 
and a folder named Holy Bible. All of my collection was cleared. All of my games were uninstalled. All of the secret collection was cleared, and in its place was the Holy Bible folder that suits you. I turned around and looked at the tormentor with teary eyes. I hope that reading the Bible will help curing you of your behavior. Yeah, I approached her. You monster. It is for your own good, NG. Now, how about we read it together Tilda? Yeah, click she lowered her head until she saw the phone under her skirt. Our eyes met. Uck, uck, you 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 uck. Damn. I made her cry. I looked at the phone. On the screen were. R. Come on, this is such a treasure. It's surely worth it. New Jersey re-established her collection within one week, giving her the title of the worst enemy of short skirts, and establishing a fashion of wearing shorts under skirt. Four sisters no twenty. Rise and shine, Whiskey Tilda. The first thing that happened today was my sisters, dragging me out of my room. Why are you so agitated today? It was too much even for them. Whiskey. We ain't gonna eat without you. Pick up your butt and let's go. NJ, fine. I'm going. At least tell me what you're planning. Of course we are having some barbecue today. Mo, I had to accept that it is another beef eaters day. Those guys never eat anything but roasted beef. The plaza near the dormitories was turned into barbecue heaven and the smell of roasting meat spreads around the academy, attracting more and more people. I was standing on the outskirts, looking at the commotion. Why are you standing here? Alone Tilda. The free cast me from behind. What am I supposed to be doing? It's big sis work, not mine. Entertaining the bystanders is that clown's work. And what have you forgotten between my legs? I asked the freak, who was lying on her back right below me. I'm just enjoying the sun. NJ. Die. Stomp the barbecue festival was proceeding as they planned. People were coming here, and eating our stock of meat. The only problem is that neither of us set anything but lemonade. I was getting tired of standing in a corner but I couldn't distract my sisters. While I was pondering what to do, the platinum blonde approached me. Aha, uh -huh, you are standing here, so you might as well do something for me. I looked at her with no interest. Come with me. PB. Why would I? You are not coming? She tilted her head. Really? She looked like big sis, when she's refused. W well, I might spare a minute for the likes of you. It's not because I need your company. I followed her and ended up in a small group of people. They went to the center of the festival and approached Missouri. Who dared challenging me? Are you tired of living? Mortar dot question mark oh, whiskey, how's it going? Mo, hey, what's going on? Even a weirdo like her wouldn't wear that eye patch if I no reason. Not to mention that stupid holy cloak. The one who wins against me in a challenge shall have reward bestowed by the great fire demon. So, my kin, have you come here to challenge me? Now I understand how Iowa feels whenever we do something obnoxious. Spit it out. At least some entertainment. You foo foo tilde, fine. If you insist on challenging me, then come forth. Mo. I was ready for anything, even the most stupid of things but I never expected that when I crossed the crowd of bystanders I would see. D4. Mo. Hit. My poor battleship. H1. It must be there. Miss. Arg. D5. Mo. Sunk. That should be it. I've won Tilda. Mo. Just where did you hide that destroyer? She flipped the board and I saw it. H2, whiskey. Too close tilde. Arg, oh arg, try again the next time tilde. Who will dare challenging me now? I walked away in shame. While I was wandering around, I walked into a table. Big sis was serving the table. Are we going to have some chore soon? You bet, whiskey. Can you, please, help me with the plates? Yeah. I might as well do it. Since you will bring the meat faster. Whatever you say Tilda. The two of us did everything in a moment, and the suffering battleships lined up nearby. Missouri and New Jersey were chatting, and I felt like the freak was taunting Mo. What happened? 
I was too curious to leave it like that. Nothing, just a big sister's reminder of who's in charge Tilda. N.J., you jest, sis, she just won the battleship, nothing more. I'll win the next one. Mo, no way Tilda. N.J., meanwhile, the plates of smoking brown steaks arrived in slender hands of Iowa. We all sat down, and I finally looked into the plate. Big sis, I love you Tilda. Pork. It's pork, you foo-foo Tilda. I'm glad you like it Tilda. Iowa was melting from happiness, while the freak was melting from lust. As the plates were emptied, the crowds dispersed, and the coals cooled, I headed back home. It was an acceptable day. I may've had some fun but not too much, especially with that freak lurking around. I might as well read some bull. Where are you going? Let go back Tilda. Missouri caught the collar of my shirt and dragged me back. What now? I was mad at my sister's Iowa class, line up. Yeah, not again. I'm so tired of those drills. Ready the guns. Yeah, the rammers started pushing the shells and the powder bags inside the guns. Iowa, guns ready. Yeah, New Jersey, guns ready. NJ, Missouri, spells ready. Mo, Wisconsin. Can I go home already? On my mark, fire. Yeah, boom 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 the first salute is out. Ready the next. Yeah, the entire academy remember this night. It was a hellish night. When the windows were shaking, and ears were ringing. Only by the midnight the crazy battleships stopped firing sixteen guns, and turned to firing the five and bow forces. Not a single soul slept well. Little did they know, that this madness will be repeated the next year, and the year after that, and so on. Congratulations to all those people who still use Fahrenheit, inches, and gallons. May all of you have good holiday and enjoy your time. 36 guns salute to all of you. V3CH32 The new way my numerous attempts at finding crew ended up in vain, so I had to return to Patricia. I was directed to Alba's hut, since Patricia is there. Instead of entering, I put my ear to the door, trying to hear anything. Don't you understand? No way. Why would you think? Just accept the reality. Even if you tell me. P.S.S.S.T. I felt like I was spotted. I backed away from the door. Russell I stepped on dry leaves and now I was surely spotted. Creak the door opened and Alba looked outside. This little trick always works. Watch out for the leaf Stilda. The woman giggled and pulled me inside. No matter what you heard, right now you should be concerned with other things. A. Can I borrow Patricia? I need at least anybody. I'll die of boredom if I remain alone. I put an emphasis on the latter part. You hear that, Patricia? Cats must not be left alone, or they start being very, very by. Patricia grumbled and turned away. You want something from me? What things I should be concerned with? Alba sat down and threw me a small bag. Inside were some trinkets, and? Those things are from the West. The Westerners are known for their intricate craftsmanship and Benizio relies on them for their most profitable businesses. We should try cutting off the ties but it is impossible without contacting the West. A. Just what stops you from sinking their ships? What should I do? You. You might be the only ship to have chances. The way to the West is deadly. Only few ships return, despite being sent in hundreds. I want you to arrive to the West, find whoever is the leader and make sure the western goods stop being sent to Benizio. We have enough strength to disrupt the caravans but it is common sense not to touch ships returning from the west. Our hands are tied there. I started laughing after hearing that. The pirates who have common sense of not attacking ships? Laugh all you want, beast. The people who navigated the great abyss ocean are just a step away from being legends. Cross the ocean, stop Benetian trade with the West, and we all are golden, and we will be diamond if you reroute the trade to us.
I felt that she's missing the part that the ships rarely survive the trip. Then I'll take Patricia and head out. My dear daughter Tilda? Alba kindly smiled and showed Patricia the way out. Why me? P. Nobody else is willing, and... I pointed my arms at Alba. The cats must be cared for Tilda. She showed back at me. Ugh, just when did the two of you? Patricia stomped out, possibly in the correct direction. Alba and I remained alone in the hut. Don't mind her words. She still needs to step over her fails. Can I ask you to look after this impulsive child of mine? A eh, sure thing. Patricia packed her stuff and was already aboard when I returned to the ship. I immediately undocked and set sail for the open sea. Since my presence at the bridge is not required for the controls, I went outside. The seagulls were circling above the ship, all of them. Are you guys hungry? I went to pick up the fishing rod. C-A-C-A-C-A. -A -A -A. They immediately started meowing after I moved. The moment I stood, they went silent. I stepped back. They meowed. I stopped. They shut up. What do you guys even want from me? I ignored the noisy birds and picked up the fishing rod. When I headed for the starboard, the seagulls started meowing again. Fine, I'll fish from the stern. When I was walking to the stern, they grew even more agitated, and started to actually swarm around the bow. C-A-C-A-C-A. Their shrieks grew so loud that my patience was at the limit. Fine. I stomped to the bow, and they went silent. Immediately, I checked the compass, and I was heading east. I stopped at the bow, and turned to the starboard. C-A-C-A-C-A. -C -A -C -A. To the port side. Tumbleweed crosses the ship. Then I looked at the stern. C-A-C-A-C-A. -C -A -C -A. Really? They want me to head east, or what? I kept trying different things, I was changing the way I look, I was trying to look and walk in different ways, but one thing was constant, the seagulls were meowing only when I walked west and south, then it was the time to try steering the ship, after I set course for the east, the seagulls flew ahead of the ship, and some of them were meowing near the bridge, the closer I was to following the flock ahead. The less noises I heard, I did the same with the north, and the seagulls were showing me the way again. In the end I understood that they are guiding me somewhere. The problem is, where should I go? Ship girl dialogue lines, Dash to Orleans, Dash to Brittany announcement disclaimer, what is written here is a fanfic of what would my ship girl's dialogue lines look like if they were in Azerlane. The phrases were written in Azolane style and refer to some of Azolane characters. I don't own any rights to the game or its contents. Please, don't sue me. FFNF. Dash Dorleans ship description. Dash class super battleship number one. Dash Dorleans self introduction. Dremble. Weakling, for you face the pinnacle of might. The holiest battleship of Aris Liber. Dash Dorleans. I bear the proud name dating to the old days of Iris orthodoxy. I am untainted, and always shall be. I chose death, instead of dishonor, and here I am, enjoying the faith's cruel joke. Receive, who summons me? You? So weak. Listen. Then, I am Dash Dorleans, the one who bears the holy will of Iris orthodoxy. Shall you stand in my way? And I will cleanse you in my purging fire. Shall you pay the way for me? The God shall grace you. What shall you choose? Weakling? Log in. You dare interrupting my prayers. Work time? And my apologies. I was too fervent. View details. Check up, please. Proceed. Just don't climb inside the guns. Main screen one. Never lose the goal, or you will stray from the God's path, like they did. Main screen two. So cute, Tilda. Ah, weakling. Is there something? Those are my sister's photos, we might as well enjoy them together, for God wills us to share. Main screen 3, becoming stronger is the only path, those who are weak end up shattered and struggling for survival, or worse end up clinging to strong to survive in slavery. Normal touch, what is it? Do you want to join the prayer? Very well, repeat after me the words of the prey. Special touch, do not mistake astuteness for strength. 
otherwise you will end up flattened on the wall behind you. Mission reminder, the God's will is to work harder. You, on the other hand, are ignoring your superior's tasks. Mission complete. You wish for rewards. Rather aim for the heaven and eternity, than for the perishable, fleeting, worldly rewards. Still, one must be consoled with something on their way to God. Mail reminder. A new message has arrived. Read it faster, for we have many tasks to do. Return to port. More souls were claimed for the purgatory. I shall pray that yours will not stay there for long. When your time comes, upset, Artis, Favalenti, stranger, how a weakling like you can keep such a fleet running. Fascinating, yet insignificant. I shall continue observing. Maybe, one day. Friendly, you fufu tilde. Oh, weakling? What, you never thought I can be laughing? I strive to be ideal follower of God but it doesn't mean I know no worldly pleasures. Those, those are my sister's photo albums. And no, you cannot state your purpose of coming, or scram. Crush, indeed, you are showing promise. Even though you are weakling, you might be able to surprise me. If God wills it, I will guide you, to fulfill his will. What I mean, of course I must work on changing your lifestyle. We will start right here, right now. Come here, and join me in praying. You want to look at my sister's cute photos afterwards? Gee God wills us to share, so. Yes, love, begone, foul thoughts. You, whenever I see you, my mind is filled with sinful thoughts, and yet you dare showing in front of me? Gee God does not forbid the relations. B but I am. W well, forget it. I shall go and pray for the answer. Until I receive a God's will, I shall let you accompany me. That is my will. Promise. You hear this. This is the choir of our future. The sacred song that shall bind us together, in life and death, in happiness and sorrow, until death separates us and one of us heads there, to meet with Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together and vow to remain by each other's side. Commission complete. God willed these girls to return, and it is up to you to make sure they will always return safely. Enhancing complete. Are there any limits? To my might. Flagship fight, sortie, holy warriors. For the time of battle is now. Victory. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Defeat, amusing. But futile. Skills. How does IT feel, to be caught between the hammer and the anvil? Low HP, my body may be close to perishing, but my guns are not. Additional voice line 1, sortie with Richelieu, Cardinal, stay behind me and don't cause trouble. Additional voice line 2, sortie with Dush de Brittany, Munch, please, bear with me. Forge your fervor into your resolve and strength. FFNF. Dash to Britanny ship description. Dash class super battleship number two. Dash to Britanny self introduction. Tremble, weakling, for you face the sword of Damocles. I am Iris Liber's second super battleship. Dash to Britanny. I was never born, but God wills me to exist. Hence I am here. My zeal is my armor, and my guns are my sword. No heretic and no siren shall survive the coming onslaught. Receive, through the eternity I heard a summon. Are you the commander? Dash to Brittany. Pride and unpent strength of virus orthodoxy shall stand with you, until God wills otherwise. Now, guide me to a glorious fight, where I shall show my raw power. Log in, he 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 tilde. So er is so, oh, oh beautiful tilde. Ah, you're here. View details, hey. Don't touch that. So er gifted me this. And don't touch that. And that too. You know what? Don't touch anything. So er was in this room an hour prior. Don't corrupt the air. Main screen 1. So er play with me Tilda. Main screen 2. Ha 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 Tilda. So er is so beautiful. And everybody knows it Tilda. Maybe even the likes of you can understand the heavenly beauty of so er Tilda. Main screen 3. You want me to do some work. Who do you take me for? I am God's holy warrior, not your lackey. Normal touch. You are, yes. 
You can take a glance at So Er's beautiful photos. Special touch. You, how much of your hands you want to be torn off? After all, only So Er can touch my breasts. Rub, MHM Tilda. I just need to imagine it's So Er, and not the perverted Commander Tilda. Mission reminder. Don't be such a sloth. If So Er was to be tasked with this, she would have already completed everything. Mission complete. Without So Er you wouldn't have done it. Go and shower her with praises. Male reminder. Is it from So Er? Is it? Is it? No. Return to port. So Er. You're back Tilda. Ah. It's you. No. Never mind. Upset. Commander. Please. Come here. I should deal with you right here and right now. To avoid corrupting the air which So Er breathes. Stranger. Weaklings are destined to be crushed and to avoid it they must dedicate themselves to becoming stronger. So Air is the strongest, and you must follow her example. Friendly, how to become stronger? Of course you need to follow So Air's lead. Come on, let's watch how she's training Tilda. I want to look at this heavenly beauty Tilda. Crush, what do I think about you? W well, uh, why you know what? Uh, what I think about my sister. So Er is there. Continues talking for an hour. Love, you followed So Er's example? Good for you Tilda. I heard she is exercising right now. Let's go Tilda. Where? Of course to exercise area. To watch So Er's training Tilda. What? You don't want to. Promise. What are you doing? Ah, you're making a vow? Which vow? R. To love So Er forever Tilda. I shall make the vow too. Then Tilda, you are going to vow with me to love So Er forever? Good. Then we will be acolytes of her advent together Tilda. Commission complete. The girls from the commission team have returned. Let's go give them thanks, and guide them to church. Enhancing complete. So Er, uh, watch me. Watch how I will surpass you. Flagship fight. Sortie, holy warrior. Our crusade starts here. Deus Vault. Victory. Enemies cancelled, Commander. Defeat. Ha ha ha. So er, uh, help me. Skills. You all shall be nullified. Low HP. Come and try me, wretches. Additional voice line 1. Sortie with Dust Orleans. So er, uh, I shall write a poem about our love Tilda. Will the blood of our enemies be a good ink Tilda? V3CH33 Eastern Cruise I started thinking about what to do with those cheeky seagulls. For a second I doubted what to do but then I remembered that I copied the entire known world's map and opened it. The main archipelagos of Benetian holdings are scattered from west to east, so if I move to the north, I will soon meet huge monsters and would have no land for a long time. Unless the seagull's point of interest is close. On the other hand, the way to the east will be near islands and I might as well follow this trail. Since I finally made the decision, I set course for the east. The seagulls approved of it by remaining silent. I steered the ship and maintained the course, birthed by the seagulls. Knock knock the door opened and Patricia entered. She was wet and angry. Can you stop steering left and right for no reason? I just wanted to drink but now I am drenched from head to toes. P, you can proceed drinking now. I stopped setting course. Thank you for your generous permission. She approached the compass and glanced at it. I closed my ears. What is going on? Why are we sailing eastward? My ears. Have you heard the seagulls? Me too. They want us to sail to the east. Patricia gulped and glanced at the seagulls outside. We are so dead if they drag us into a storm. P. They did nothing bad to us yet, so I just continued doing what I did. On our way I had several sonar contacts but they were far enough to not consider them a threat. The signals tried staying nearby but we were too fast for them. A day later we reached the border seers of Benizio and left the hostile territory. In between two archipelagos I had another sonar contact. It was trying to intercept us, so I launched depth charges. A couple of present flew towards the target and splashed near. Boom since the stupid enemy did not expect something like that, the depth charges exploded close enough to make it stop. I felt like it stopped forever. 
The next day I encountered another contact. It was swimming very fast and was trying its best to chase after me. As it approached the depth charge range, I shot two charges, waiting for the enemy to be killed again. Boom as the charges exploded, raising two bubbles of water, something shot from the water, and flew towards us. Ra ah! Enemy on approach. What I saw through binoculars was appearing to be a reptilian. It had a long snake-like body with short limbs and two large wings. Patricia, what the hell is this? She glanced. It's a sea wyvern. Unless you can shoot upwards, we are dead. P. Then let's start shooting. I must have some points left for AA. Ding you received 139 upgrade points IJ and Kirin Army. DDL. Upgrade points. 2. Torpedoes. 66 six. HP 3700 high minus 100% AU minus 75% 2263 nanometers 13 millimeters AA mount 1 increase caliber 050 improve mounts 0 100 13 millimeters AA mount 2 increase caliber 050 13 mm deck mount max. I waited until the wyvern was in 500 meters and opened fire with everything I've got. Boo 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 bum boo 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 bum bang bang bang. At most, there were a couple of stray bullets that hit this crazily maneuvering target. The wyvern was flying as if it had a tremor. Boo 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 bum boo 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 bum. I continued firing machine guns while the 102 mm were reloading. The closer the wyvern was, the harder it was to evade the bullet storm. Its wings were full of holes and the beast fell back into the water, a few dozens of meters away from the ship. Ra ah! Bang 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 before it could dive. I fired and straddled it. The slow moving wyvern met an unexpected demise, after being fed two shells. Only after it sunk, we breathed out. Hey, was it capable of breathing fire? N eh, no. It's not. Its claws are sharp enough to tear through wood. So it is considered a terrifying existence but if you can kill it before it approaches, then it's harmless. Somewhat harmless. P. We finally relaxed, and then headed to sleep for a bit. It was our long-awaited moment of silence. After we left Benetian waters, the seagulls calmed down and returned to their VIP seats all over the ship. It was calm and soothing silence, interrupted only by the sound of waves hitting the ship. Four days after setting sail, we left the known world, and headed into unknown waters. Four sisters no twenty-one. Recently there was nothing to do for me. There were no monster invasions, no stampedes, no dragons, and no wars. I was already out of idea how to pass time but then I remembered there is a bulletin board somewhere, people from nearby villages post requests there. Usually those are heal, gather, and chop some wood types of quests but, if I am lucky I can find an extermination quest. When I approached the board, I was astonished. There were many students and I would have to stand in a queue just to look at the board. That's not going to go well for me. If someone snatches the last extermination quest, then what would I have to do? However, there is a way for me to walk past the queue. I sneaked behind a corner and prepared. After I was done, I approached the crowding students, whose quantity increased exponentially. Scram, rabble, for the great fire demon has come. What is going on here? Are there any followers of evil, who dare threatening the people? Not her. Just why of all times? Maybe we can. Are you still standing? Do you dare disobeying my decree? I walked through the crowd and used my staff of fire to clear the way of belated students in my way. Finally, I approached the bulletin board and skimmed through its contents. As I expected, most of the quests there were related to hauling, sweeping, and other exciting stuff that is only done by the poorest of students. Hence the crowd of rich students searching for something good. Hey, can you hurry? Someone called out from behind. Oh, great fire. Listen to my command and... Never mind. 
It always works. After long search I found a couple of extermination quests. One was to exterminate a rabid dog, and the other was to exterminate the demon king. I guess this spam is posted everywhere. As I was about to go away, I caught a glimpse of an interesting quest. A couple of villagers saw a ghost. Since there is nothing to do, I might as well catch the ghost and then have a courage test for my sisters. At the village I was directed to a field nearby, where the ghost was spotted the last time. The field was abandoned but I was not worried about it. The worse the enemy, the more fun I would have. I waited the entire day but nothing happened. I expected it to appear at least before the evening but in the end I had to call Big Sis and tell her I won't be returning until tomorrow. You damn ghost. I had to skip Big Sis dinner because of you. Do you have no shame? Silence was the answer. I finally went to sleep and expected to report that there were no ghosts but a few hours later I heard something. Stupid humans. They are so foolish. Exactly. I said this will work, and I was right. I peeked from the rye and saw a couple of shadows a few yards away. I picked up a stone and threw it in one of the shadows. What? What was that? Idiot. Don't shout. Yeah, it must have been the wind. Then I pushed a secret magical button and my staff lit with crimson fire. Red LED, who's there? The shadows hissed at me. Are you the ones who dare disturbing my domain? Bow to me, pathetic creatures, or else you shall face you end. I scattered magical dust, glowing dust, and aimed the staff at them. Ha ha ha. The shadows came out of hiding and I saw it. Red skin, horns, and black armor. You think a pathetic creature like you can order the demons round Tilda? Kiss my boots if you want to be just our and not killed afterwards. They were reveling in their power. While I was trying my best to hide the corners of my lips, that were trying to climb up. Who are you, demons apostrophe Tilda? You must be just a couple of actors, shivering in fear after seeing the crimson fire of my aura. We? We are his craziness attendants. Do you even know what we can do to you for? Ha ha ha. You are but a dirt under my boots. Tremble, mortal beings, for I am the one who rules the pits of hell. I am the one and only, the great fire demon. Ha. You? Demon? They were shouting in disbelief, while the three of us were showing off. I sensed a shadow approaching from behind them. The shadow was much larger, and had more muscles. Who? Dares. Two interrupt. My sleep? It was a huge demon. And it was pee off. Your craziness, this pathetic human dead calling itself a demon. Please, please, punish this impudent filth. The minions started squeaking something and the big demon finally glanced at me. You. Are. Me? I am the great fire demon. The one who command both the hell and the earth. Kneel. You weakling. Kneel and praise my name for eternity. I guess. It is really a problematic one. Ha. 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 Bang the huge demon swung a mace and it shattered the ground around. Is this weak? It is pathetic. Boom he struck the ground again, and a huge hole appeared in the ground. Is this weak? Nothing but a nuisance. Then show me what is strong. I smiled like whiskey when she is in the first place and can make us all eat pork, from the depths of hell. Hear mine summon, the eternal and indisputable power of flame. I, the one who controls the world is calling upon my loyal servant. Listen to my call and obey me, great flame, bring ruin to my enemies and approach the era of extinction. Invoke chaos upon this land and bring me my deserved glory. XPLO Scion. Boom 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 as the cordite ashes settled. We all looked at the nearby hill. At what is left of it. So Tilda? I glanced at the shivering demons. This. One. Begs. Great. Demon. Four. Forgiveness. As the largest demon knelt, his minions literally spread out on the ground in Dojeza. Then, go and spread the glorious name of Great Fire Demon around the world. Only then shall I give you my forgiveness and let you live until the apocalypse I shall bring upon this world. Go.
W well, it was more fun than I expected. Hi 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 tilde. V3 CH34. Birds in tangible plan humming since plotting course. Maneuvering, checking weather, and other boring stuff was neglected. I had a lot of time for myself. Because whenever I asked about it, Patricia claimed that the seagulls are guiding storms. Then it also means they are guiding me where I need. I just make sure we don't hit a stray island and that I sail where they guide me. Since my usual work was outsourced and I had a lot of time, it would be weird if I did not use it for myself. C-A-C-A -C -A yes, yes, wait for a bit. It takes longer than you think it does. Those cheeky little bastards keep on stealing my catch but because I am having a lot of spare time, I don't mind fishing longer. Not to mention, we are yet to encounter anything. The course is safe and I steer only when the flock changes course, or when a monster appears. As I finally relaxed, the fishing rod started dinging, or rather the bell I put on it. Ding 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 I started pulling the fish out of the water but it resisted. The fight has started. I was pulling the prey, yet I only managed to catch a glimpse of its tail before it rushed down. My eyes were locked on the fish. The seagull's eyes were locked on the rod. Patricia's eyes were locked on this circus show. Just what kind of a sea monster is this? I asked her, since I have no idea how the damned fish keeps resisting my charms and brute force. Patricia glanced through the railing with no interest and observed the prey. Stop fighting, damn you. I felt like the rod would break soon. Give me the fishing rod. Patricia pulled it out of my hands and in one swoop pulled the fish out of the water. I saw how the fish and drops of water flew into the sky, passing in front of the sun and then ended up in front of my eyes. It was a miraculous fish. A fabulous fish. A never seen before fish. It was a sardine. Ha ha ha. Just ha ha you couldn't ha hatch it? P. Very funny. Ha ha ha. P. I took back my high tech device and nailed a new worm. I did not even bother with the sardine. Since it disappeared the next instant it hit the deck. C A C A. You're welcome. Little bastard. I finally relaxed and the fish were steadily hitting the deck disappearing as suddenly as they ended up above water. Patricia was nowhere to be seen. The seagulls were silent, and I could enjoy my deserved rest. Rumble I couldn't help flinching. When I looked towards the bow, I saw that we are heading straight for a huge storm. I didn't bother checking barometer. Neither did I monitor the weather. I was just fishing and living in my own world, not bothering myself with the surroundings. I felt like I once again failed to prepare for the worst, even though it keeps reminding me about itself. All of the bulkheads were sealed and the pumps were started. I closed off all parts of the ship that were not visited frequently. Only the bridge and some crew cabins were not shut. The closer we were to the storm, the stronger were the waves. Some large waves even started flooding the front deck. After I made sure everything is ready, I entered the bridge. I told you that the storm wings will kill us, didn't I? P, then why would they stay here for so long? Why didn't they kill us when they just arrived? We've been in the sea for a week and only now they did something. Just how am I supposed to know what's happening inside their bird heads? I started preparing to stop the hysterics. Come on, it's me who did not pay attention on the weather. The storm just happened to be on our way nothing more. Let's think how to pass through it with minimal damage. So you are not denying that we will be damaged. Ha ha. Yeah, right, let's prepare. I will peel a couple of boards from the deck to make us coffins. I caught her collar and dragged to the windows. Look there, the storm is just crossing our way. There should be no problem. Seeing that Patricia just accepted death, I had to drag the unresponsive hysterical girl to a bed. The seagulls were not bothered by the storm and ignored both the wind and the waves. They were not bothered by the thunder and dark clouds. They just were continuing as if nothing happened. For now, 
I focused on maintaining floatability. V3CH35 Endless waves Crash the ship jumped up on another wave and at the top of the wave, I fell down, right into the next wave. Sometimes the waves were covering the windows of the bridge, making it impossible to see what is going on. If I was driving a car, then I would have already crashed into a tree for a hundred times but here in the sea it is a completely different story. The brave Captain Patricia was stuck in the toilet, washing out the contents of her stomach, and occasionally shouting at me and cursing. My faithful fish robbers were also flying around, ignoring the waves as if they did not exist. Even after several hours of being cleaned, the seagulls were perfectly dry even after they were flying right into the waves. That's what I call magic world, the world where you can literally enter a 5 meter wave, then spend a few seconds there, and then come out perfectly dry, even after doing so for hours, as we proceeded deeper into the storm, I realized that the waves are not going to calm down anytime soon. Moreover, I already had some flooding and took small damage from the waves. If I was on a larger ship, then I wouldn't even care about those waves, as if they did not exist. Now that I am on a smaller side of things, I can imagine how tough the life would be for sailors. If a steel ship of 3,700 tons is rocked hard, then what would the storm like this look for a smaller ship? A galleon for example. Crash I shivered when the windows were covered in water. I wonder if those are armored glass panels designed to withstand at least something. If they are simple glass windows then would be as good as dead here, and dying was not a pleasant experience. While I was busy thinking about my death, and possible dying now, the door opened and something crawled inside. How is it going? I asked the crawling something. Can you make it stop? I could only pity Patricia. As a ship I felt nothing about being in the sea but even the best of sailors would go crazy if they are constantly in between the floor and the ceiling. I would, if I could, bear with it for a bit longer. I think the waves are growing weaker. I told her a white lie, since the waves were only growing stronger and she will actually go crazy if I don't keep her focused on something. They are? I was immediately held by the collar. Don't be so agitated, I still have a ship to be steered, how about you try to sleep? Ye. Yeah. Yes, maybe. Ho, oh, I'll be going. I grabbed her hand and led her to the crew cabins, hoping that she will stop pestering me with her seasickness. I sat her on the bed and had to push her down and pin her with my body to just make sure the overagitated girl wouldn't stand up again soon. After I heard calm breathing. I let go of her and stood up. On my way out I heard some mumbling. Was I a good girl, sister? Play with me. I returned to the bridge, and kept on making sure we will not topple. Meanwhile, in the office, is everything proceeding smoothly? The doge of Benizio curiously asked Veronica. Yes, father. We managed to form a perimeter around the pirate-controlled areas. Their main fleet is bound to its home port. In a couple of months, the new series of battleships will be finished. Victory is assured. V, you said the same about that beast. Where does your confidence come from? D, it was just a minor inconvenience. If further followed the plan perfectly, she would have already been at your feet. Veronica could only shrug her shoulders. Impudent child. Are you saying this is my fault? The doge searched for a cup but his hands found nothing. She was almost convinced. That is an indisputable fact. Now, what should I do? Little Patricia is still out there. Having fun. V. Focus on the current assignments. Make sure the pirates never reach the west. That much should do it. D. Absolutely. Veronica bowed and left the office. I must try harder, must try harder, only work harder, for your sake. Four sisters no twenty-two. After the lessons ended I was called to the principal's office. The messenger said something about crisis and catastrophe. I already mentally prepared myself to hear what outrageous thing Missouri did. Knock knock please, come in. P. I peeked inside and didn't see Mo. 
Have you not caught Missouri yet? I cautiously asked the principal. I am sorry, miss, but it is not about her. It is about you. I was petrified. Then I looked around the room and saw the crown prince's fiancé sitting by the principal. I sat down too and wondered what happened. Sir, I demand her expulsion. She dared to. CPF, one moment. Miss Fiancé, Miss Iwa, can you explain what happened the day His Highness arrived? P. I explained everything, New Jersey's actions too. The principal had to bring me water a couple of times, since I almost fainted from embarrassment. I really should make this silly girl read the Holy Scripture. Don't worry, sir, I will go and make sure my sister repents. No matter how. You see, she doesn't even try to. The principal closed her mouth with his palm, and answered, I would be glad, if you do this, Miss Iwa. Can you please make sure that we won't have more complaints about inappropriate actions of Miss Jersey? I nodded and prepared to leave. But sir, you said you will solve the issue. CPF, I did. Mississippi, I would eat my boots, if Miss Iowa ever does something like what you told me. I wondered what they were talking about. As I arrived to the dormitories plaza I saw the crown prince. He was surrounded by girls and apparently was giving them autographs. Also I saw a shadow lurking nearby. Bang 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 I fired full broadside of five guns at the shadow. The shadow swung a fist at me through the dust, before disappearing. Still, I averted another scandal, even if New Jersey will be whining later. I approached the crown prince to wonder what is going on. Good day, your highness. Is there something going on? N no. What happened? He pointed at the craters. Oh, I just had my sister removed from the area. The girls looked at me in admiration, before returning to their business. I see. Well, I was caught by the ladies, who asked to sign their textbooks. I wonder if Miss Iwu is asked to do the same? I giggled. Perhaps, you can say so. Though I am asked to do this because I am an associate teacher in the academy. They have to have my sign in their textbook stilda. Ha ha, then would it be alright if miss helps me and my fiancé prepare for the tests? I still giggled, nervously giggled. I, I must say yes, right? I'm big sister after all. Of course, let's meet some time, and prepare tilda. Thank you, Miss Iowa. I am sincerely touched by your kindness. Farewell. I will go conform the day with my fiancé. One of my aides will tell you the possible days for the study. I waved goodbye, and went to the room. After I cry for a bit, I will start preparing. I would fail both as big sister, and as teacher, if I can't prepare them for the tests. V3CH36. The prolonged storm the longer I sailed through the storm the more I was convinced that it is something to do with the seagulls. Even though we spent an entire day, 24 hours, inside of the storm, we were yet to leave it. The waves stopped growing stronger at some point but they didn't start becoming weaker. Everything felt like we are in the eye of the storm but we were in this situation for far longer than it would appear to be natural, aside from occasional flooding and minor damage to the hull. There was nothing to be concerned about. We were not in the state of immediate threat. Then, the wind suddenly stopped, and the storm dissipated in moments. The final wave struck the ship, and then everything around us went quiet. Patricia cautiously looked around, and looked at me with the same shocked expression as I looked at her. Those little guys are surely something. I couldn't help looking at the seagulls flying as if nothing happened. I am glad they stopped torturing us. Patricia fell on her knees and finally breathed out in relief. I checked the situation around us and confirmed that nothing happened. The radar and the sonar were still alive. Despite everything, the guns were fine. The hull after the water is pumped out, everything should be fine. Tis but a scratch. Ping. Just when we finally relaxed, I heard a ping. I continued listening but nothing came afterwards. What is it? Patricia looked at me. When I put an earphone to my cat ear. Nothing, I must have misheard. Ping. 
Why you are pale? Please, tell me it's all right. Patricia pale together with me. The sonar is not malfunctioning. Neither should my ears. Maybe. H hey. H how be big can CM monsters be? Ping. T they say that the Western Abyss monsters can be huge. Huge like towns. We both became white as paper. Ping we are doomed. Ping whatever it is. It is ridiculously huge, and fast. Ping let's run. P. Ping too late. Full ahead. Man the stations. Ping the seagulls scattered, and started grouping far above. Ping 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 as the enemy approached, I steered the rudder like crazy. Soon the destroyer started drifting like in a Tokyo drifting race. Ping 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 whoosh something passed by the ship. It was huge. Even through the water, even from a distance, even though it was deep. I saw it. A long snake-like body with green scales. A huge head, which is as big as the ship itself, and a speed surpassing any and all sail ships. As the monster passed completely, the pinging calmed down but soon I started hearing fast pings again. Splash in the few kilometers I saw how the creature surfaced. Its huge head looked at us, and saliva started dripping. Rah! We are doomed. P. While the creature was still looking at us. I started praying to all of the gods that are willing to hear me. The guns aimed, and I pulled the trigger of fire control. Bang 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 after it saw muscle flashes, the creature dived back, and started accelerating towards us. Pom pom the depth charge throw us fired. Boom boom rah. As the charges exploded, the creature surfaced and shook its head in fury. I aimed at the point where I hoped its head would be and fired. Bang 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 the shots missed but I had some time before the monster dived. The next wave of shells scattered around near its head, and the creature twitched. Rah! It dived again, only to receive another portion of charges. Its trajectory was somewhat shifted so I hoped it was hit. Since it was slowed down, I tried firing anti-submarine shells, just in case. Bang 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 the target was too deep and when it regained consciousness, it charged forward. I started to spray and pray, only hoping to stall it until I gained some speed and distance. The monster was too fast to fight it without speed. Pom pom boom boom the charges exploded somewhat near, and made the creature surface and shake in fury. I grasped the opportunity, and fired everything that I could. Torpedoes included. Bang 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 the time stopped. I saw how the shells flew out of the barrels, and arced on their way to the monster's head. I saw how the reptilian pupil focused on me, through the distance and a layer of glass. And I saw how the shells hit the eye, scattering around splashes of blood, and causing a terrifying screech. Rah! Meanwhile, the torpedoes were pushed out of the tubes by the compressed air. For a second I saw a notice, but before I could read it, kaboom the ship shook as the first pair of tubes exploded. Now I perfectly understood what the high explosive sign meant. Those things can explode? I was lucky that the damage was only done to the tubes themselves, and the oxygen generator below them. There were no hull breaches, and I was not broken in halves. As I was done dispatching the damage control to the burning oxygen generators, I finally returned my attention to the monster. It was still where it was. Its head was turned at me, and its right eyes was closed. What was a bit more important, is that, its throat was glowing. Four sisters no twenty-three. Today I was asked to help with the swimming class. Since I am the second most reliable of Iowa class, I couldn't refuse this request of our teacher. The first most reliable is the certain demon. The problem itself was because the teacher suddenly encountered a fated one, and is now shamelessly skipping the lesson for the sake of knowing each other better. Exactly because I am rugged and reliable, I accepted this plea of help. All right, girls. Today I'm gonna be your swimming instructor Tilda. Let's start with removing the swimsuits Tilda. I prepared a note, a measuring tape, and a pencil. I am yet to finish the ranking of largest bosoms of the academy. I'm sure Mo will be the first again but I am yet to lose the hope. I am already accustomed to the disgusted looks every girl gives me, 
while I bathe in the boys' looks of veneration. Even the highest-ranked noble boys keep some drawings under pillows, and some of them, who have nothing to lose, even ask me for spiritual guidance. Slap a slipper hit my face, and after calculating the direction, the force, the sound of the hit, and the hatred, I can conclude that it is done by none other than, you shameless commoner. Recently I couldn't help teasing that newcomer girl. Of course, in comparison with my sisters she is completely harmless. Nice toes you've got Tilda. Slap all right, people, since the most eager of us already want to get down to swimming. How about we stretch for a bit? The class grumbled but started following my moves. I may be considered the lowest of lowlifes but I have almost 50 years of experience. They can't help accepting that I know what I'm doing. Also, I have no time to do anything so they are happy with this much. They just don't know that later I'll be having a private class with my cutie pie sister. Now, let's proceed to the pool. To enter the pool you must remove the bras. I can imagine how many slaps I will receive. Once again, this is my day. My day, my rules. One of the reasons I can be so shameless is that the others are currently working on the king's birthday party preparations. I will not be let even close to that place, so I am completely free, though that queen was quite a booty. Slap tch. Here we go again. The girls defiled towards the pool. The newcomer even had the courage to slap me. Miss, may I ask you to refrain from this kind of behavior? A 3D boy approached me. I almost puked from being approached by one of those Otome beauties. A shame I always choose Otome games with Yuri Roots. What kind of it Tilda? From any kind of it. My good mood vanished in a split second. Well, I know whom I'll be pushing around today. Ah, wait, you're that guy who seduced every second girl in the academy? After I looked at him closer I recognized that it is the one who made almost all of my cuties fall for him, within the few days he stayed here. WWW what? M miss. You shouldn't be joking like this. CP, what tilde? You're gonna make this teacher fall for you too tilde? Shammy less tilde. The nagging boy disappeared in the pool right the next instant. While the girls were swinging their legs, I could enjoy the view. Still. The mandatory exercises are but a part of the lesson. And after some time passed I had to proceed with the lesson. Right, time's up, so you're free to do whatever you feel like. Yeah, go ahead with the playing. The serious atmosphere of noble lesson disappeared immediately. Yeah, hey, hey. Take this. You are not going to catch me. They are children. Like, really. I couldn't help feeling like a granny watching her grandchildren play around on a beach in California. Because whenever we were there, we were staying in a pool, not on a beach. Are you feeling lonely? The newcomer boy sat by my side. A little. I can't help feeling old when those guys are having all the fun. Ha ha. You are nicer to the people than you try to look like. Are you not? CP, maybe. Maybe I'm just after the boobs. I looked at him and prepared to tease him a bit. It is not weird to be different from what people expect you to be. He put his palm on my cheek. From below he looked so handsome that my heart skipped a beat. Holy see, I almost did whiskey here. Oh boy, this one surely's going to be a pain in the back, thought it, as I quickly made my way to the opposite side of the pool. V3 CH 37. Suicide rush woo for a second the windows were covered in fire. I checked the HP. Ding you received 338 upgrade points IJN Kirin Army. DDL. Upgrade points. 40. Torpedoes. 4 6. HP. 2709. High minus 100%. AU minus 40%. 1489 nanometers. Four single turrets increase caliber, 0 200 dual gun turrets, 0 418 dual torpedo mount, prototype oxygen, high explosive, increase caliber, 0 100 improved mounts, 0 250 improved propulsion, 0 500, 
For a second I wondered what to improve. The guns might use some upgrade but they are more than enough. I decided to risk with the explosive torpedoes. That's quite a breath. I don't want to deal with this thing anymore. Splash I launched two more torpedoes, and both of them missed. Rawr. The monster tried to bite the ship but I steered away before its jaws closed on me. While it was still nearby, I dropped the entire rack of depth charges. Boom 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 for now, the sonar showed that it retreated, and is far enough to breathe out. It didn't take long for it to surface again, to receive my own revenge. Bang 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 the longer the fight continued, the less opportunities I had to attack it. The creature started to weave around making my hard efforts even more difficult. Then, something flicked in me. What are you doing? P. Brace yourself. We are coming in. What? Stop. Stop right this instant. P. I turned around, and steamed right towards the monster. I plan to torpedo it from point blank. No other options appear to be working. Bang 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 after a shot connected, I steered until I started sailing sideways and launched the last two torpedoes. Splash once again. Both of them missed. Rawr. Woo. The breath passed right by the ship, barely damaging the structure but it didn't change the fact that I ran myself into the death trap. I can only count on a deus ex machina. And then came the light, and the gods stepped down into the mortal world. They grabbed the monster and torn it apart. Rawr. Watch out. Patricia steered the wheel and we barely avoided the jaws. Stop daydreaming and get us out of here. P. I'm trying. Rawr. Splash as the monster prepared to attack again. The sky flashed. This time for real. Rumble a lightning hit the monster, making it shriek. Rawr. Rumble and then came another one, and one more, and more, and more. I used this opportunity to look up and saw that the seagulls were flying in a weird circular pattern. There was a huge circle, with another one inside of it. The circles were going in different directions, and somehow produced lightnings which were hitting the reptile with terrifying precision. Unlike my shells, the sudden thunderstorm was actually hurting the creature. Or so I judged from its shrieks. Well. At least it was not a piano falling on the monster's head out of the blue. The seagulls made the monster busy enough for me to recollect my thoughts and prepare to attack again. Close your eyes, please. You're not going to? P. I am going. So, please close your eyes. The ship once again accelerated towards the monster. This time without a suicide rush. Bang 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 I continued shelling the creature from a safe distance hoping for a lucky shot. If I can hood it, then I will be golden. Bang 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 on a fifth salvo I hit something important. Since the creature unnaturally wobbled, there were many hits but the monster was not going down yet. Okay, what I am going to do? Those 100mm shells can't do anything, unless I am lucky. I am out of torpedoes, and the machine guns would at most be a pleasant scratching. The seagulls are only stalling it. There is nothing I can do for now, no ideas came to my mind. And then I remembered Sun Tzu, if you are fighting against a strong enemy, like a dragon, when you run out of options the best idea is to run away like a scaredy cat. I decided not to contradict the famous strategist, and just set course around the monster, while the seagulls still entertain it. Only after we were far away from it and the seagulls returned to guiding me. We both could fall on the floor and weep out our terror. At least I managed to get close enough to Patricia to have a hug from her. And at least we are F alive. V3CH38 Common sense breaker after we escaped from the sea monster, the sailing proceeded smoothly. Aside from minor inconveniences, like rain and wind, the weather was favoring us. I spent a lot of time thinking about the monster and the huge storm prior to its attack. Could it be that they are related? Maybe the seagulls even created that storm to make the creature avoid us? I may not be close to the truth but I did not suspect the seagulls. They may be freeloaders. They may be making my life harder, 
and even cause Patricia to have a heart attack but I still trusted them. I just hope that whatever we are searching for will be useful. We already wasted an entire week for no reason, while we should have been sailing west. P. You are right. Still, we won't catch neither hair if we chase after both. I suppose you are right. Are you keeping an eye on more monsters? I sighed. Patricia keeps reminding me to watch out for monsters. Every time she is nearby, I might as well accept that it is how that hysterical girl works. When she finally left the bridge, I managed to relax. The sea was calm, and empty. We did not encounter a single piece of land since we sailed outside of known world. While I was wondering where is the land, the seagulls reinvigorated, and made me change course. C-A-C-A-C-A. Less than five minutes later I had an angry girl enter the bridge. Shut them up. I want to sleep. P. You think I can? I am doing whatever is possible. I always wondered if we appear to be a married couple, since we quarrel all the time for any and no reason. Soon my radar and sonar started giving weird responses. The readouts were distorted. The seagulls too started acting weird. They stopped flocking above the bow and formed a wedge above the ship. At least they shut up. I gagged her, and continued steering. The mumbling from behind was irritating but I couldn't find strength to be angry at Patricia. After all, the ground is here. From the top observation post's optics I could see some land far away. Soon we approached, and started circling around an island. The island was large and it was covered in dense vegetation. The major landmark I saw was a small abandoned harbor. I have no idea why it was abandoned, or why there were no people around. Since there was a proper place to stop, I approached the harbor, entering port, abandoned no services available the sign was not a good sign for us. After I dropped the anchor, it was the time to think. The seagulls landed and were now sitting all over the ship as they did before the travel. Patricia and I stood at the port side, and exchanged glances. Ladies ahead. I showed her towards a small wooden pier. It will no doubt collapse if anybody steps on it but it should be sturdy enough to not let her be washed away into the sea. How generous of you. P. Splash Patricia jumped into the water with a dolphin's grace. Patricia's paw I struggled against the current, and finally reached the pier. It was so rotten that I managed to tear off a piece of it just by touching. The pillars were sound enough to let me grab them. After I grabbed a pillar and turned around to check on Kirin army, I saw that this physics abuser was standing near me. On water. Standing. On water. Standing. How? Huh? It just works. She showed me a ring of her thumb and index fingers and sled to the coast. I already grew used to her doing impossible weird things but now my common sense was once again abused. Mother was right. My heart can't handle standing by such a weird beast kin without being close to stopping. If only I was as straightforward as that lunatic. Four sisters no twenty-four. Recently I was finally given an opportunity to rest. The freak sister stopped bothering me all the time and I ended up alone. Neither of my big sisters has time for me, and I dug into the bookshelf, then into the library. Then I ran out of books to read. The longer this dragged on, the worse I felt, not because I miss my sisters but because there are no books left. My normal big sisters were once again invited to assist in a local chief's birthday preps, and I regretted telling that I am sick. Maybe if I run, I'd make it there. No. I must remain strong and show them that I am not a baby. With this in mind I stepped out of the dormitory. My path was blocked by another girl. What are you looking at? What a rude girl. None of your business. Step aside. How dare you. You are the one who is in my way. I felt righteous fury just from talking to her. Did nobody teach you how to be polite? You're talking to your senior as if I'm your servant. You are talking about politeness? You shouldn't throw stones when you are living in a glass house. This little. We continued shouting at each other for a long time. And then she approached my husband. I only wanted to reprimand her that he is already mine but then I was reprimanded myself. 
CPF, that's what happens when you glance away. My sister too is something. I tell her to follow me, and then she starts whining how bad I treat her. I feel that my husband is too cold. I always invite him to have a tea together but he tells me this is not appropriate. CPF, I get you, girl. Whenever I want to have some time with my sisters, they never pay me attention. It's as if I'm non-existent. Same for me. He never tells me how much he loves me but is the first to help the other girls. Even when I need him, he is never by my side. CPF. Yeah. I was waiting for my sister to come play with me but where is she? What a tragedy. My husband too. I asked him for a date with me but where is he? CPF. Ha. Huh. Let's go drink something. We surely have a tough life with those people. We went to the cafeteria to wash away our pain. Right from the entrance I heard a familiar voice. A ain't you gonna call me teacher apostrophe tilde? Miss, you were a teacher for a single lesson. Huff huff tilde, I smell somebody coming tilde. We entered the cafeteria. You surely have a good nose. I glared at the freak. Oh, here comes my sweetie lil sis tilde. N.J. Poor you. I can't imagine how tough it is with such a person. CPF. Oh my. What brings my fiancé here at such a time? CP. Poor you. To think he cares so little. Now both of us were boiling with righteous fury, and we unleashed it. You. Why did you leave me alone for the entire day? You. I asked you to come find me. Why are you here? CPF. We were waiting for an explanation for their unforgivable actions but they both just sighed and exchanged looks. Then they whispered something to each other. The first to speak was the freak. Whiskey, my sweet little sister, were you not the one who shouted don't ever come to me? I just respected your wish. What? When did I? My fiancé, you asked to stop wasting my time with the low-born commoner girls, and make my schedule clear for today. CP. We both exchanged looks. To think that jerk doesn't even care about you. CPF. How can he be so dense when you asked him for a date? In the end we both had to nod to each other, and drag away those unfaithful people. At least I found somebody who understands me, unlike my sisters. V3CH39. The expedition I waited until Patricia reached the coast and we started exploring the coast. Aside from the rotten pier there were a couple of holy houses. I glanced inside one of them, and almost has the door fall on me. Everything that I touched was falling off with rotten wooden termites scattering around. Just how does this thing still stand? Let's see. Hey, uh, Patricia shouted, and the rotten house crumbled in a second, as if it was just waiting for this much. P.S.S.T. How about we don't approach those things? P. You don't need to tell me twice. While we were searching around the harbor, the seagulls disappeared. I did not pay attention to what is happening on the ship, and missed what happened. Those guys are independent. I'd rather be bothered with what we are supposed to find on this forgotten island. I somehow felt sorry for not having planes, even though it'd be weird if I had any. Patricia. How about we go deeper into the island? I called out to the girl, who was peeking inside the other house. Count me in, then. She jogged back, and pulled me by the hand. We went deeper into the island. Soon the green hell became so thick that we couldn't even make a step without cutting down the vegetation in front of us. Our quick expedition was rapidly turning into a slow-paced movement through the jungles. We have no water. We have no food. We have no idea where we are, can you please tell me, what is inside of your head? If there was anything, then you would have thought about bringing anything aside of your Saba. P. Sorry. I was too focused on what was happening in front of me, that I forgot about preparing. I was too drunk on success that I fooled myself into thinking that I am some kind of a cheat character, who won't be threatened by anything. I am, kind of. But Patricia is not. Please, take care of your pets, PFFFT. What? P. I wonder if Patricia would make a good cat, Tilda. Hey, 
Are you in any position to joke? Before I could tease her more, I felt something by the ship. A couple of vessels approached the island, and rapidly approached the ship. I was fired at with some arrows, before I fired back with something much heavier. Whatever those people wanted here, they retreated after my warning shots. Meanwhile, the two of us started climbing some sort of a hill. At its top we found a rocky slope where the vegetation was less dense. We finally could look around. The top of the ship's mast was the only thing visible through the trees, and a small path was the only thing visible on the slope. The path was leading to the top of a small mountain. I suggest we start climbing. Stop right there. I'm not going anywhere forward, until I have something to chew and something to drink. I looked at Patricia with the expression of mother adoring her silly child. Let's go then, my spoiled commander. WHO spoiled? You forgot to bring the supplies with us and made me climb and squeeze through all this green stuff. I felt my ears ring from her shouting. I mean, I know why she's angry but still, understood, we should hurry then. I want to find what the seagulls wanted to show. And I want to find it today. Patricia grumbled but started walking back, we did everything in hurry and arrived to the same spot only by the evening. Our path was lit only by the setting sun, and my eyes started to adapt to the darkness. Moments prior to the sun disappearing, we climbed the end of the path, and in front of us was a small temple in Japanese style. Unlike the other buildings here, this place appeared to be maintained. There was a small garden, the building was not rotten, and there was a smoking campfire outside and also there were all the seagulls. While I was glancing at Santa's little helpers, the door slid sideways, and a woman in a worn-out kimono stepped out. Ara, to think my humble abode would be blessed by someone's presence. What have you forgotten here, doll? V3CH40. The extinguished twin I looked at the woman and couldn't believe my eyes. Even though her clothes were tattered, it did not affect her beauty. Her white hair and blue eyes were beautiful and clear. I have no idea how long she lived here but I wouldn't be surprised if she arrived yesterday. Her skin too was clean, without any speck or wrinkle. I quickly glanced at her body, and was once again pleasantly surprised. If not for her kimono, she would look like a princess of some ultra-rich country. Still, it doesn't explain what the seagulls do here or why they brought me to visit this place. Have you finished, doll? The woman curiously looked at me. Maybe she caught on that I shamelessly appraised her looks. I am sorry. I am Kirin Army. Please take care of me. I did a Japanese-style greeting, and the woman chuckled. What a pleasure, seeing such a well-educated child. You must be tired after the travel. Please come inside. My dwelling may be humble but its doors are always open to the visitors. We followed the woman. I have no idea how large this house is in Tatamis but I already can say that this is not a place where two people can live together. The woman and I sat by a table, and glanced at Patricia, who was staring in shock at us. You may think it is weird but sit down, when in Rome. Do as the Romans do. Patricia was even more confused now. Sit down child. This land's customs may be strange for you but so do the customs of your land for me. After the woman's encouragement Patricia sat down, trying to copy Caesar. Just sit however you like. Caesar will make your legs hurt, if you don't have experience. Once again, the woman chuckled after hearing my words. I owe you my greetings. I am known as Eureka, the one who guards the seas. I immediately had the question in my head. What does it mean? Who 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 tilde, it means that I am the patron of all those who enter the seas, be it fishermen, or sailors. I felt a deja vu, you will understand it in the due time, doll. Why, why are you calling me doll? Can you use my name, please? I felt irritated with this nickname. I am calling you what you are, a doll. Why, wait, is she a stuffed animal? Now it was Patricia's turn to ask a stupid question. Maybe, maybe not, maybe I am just joking. Why, even if you say that I am a doll, 
How would you explain that I am doing whatever I want? Patricia started nodding. You foo-foo Tilda. It only means that your puppeteer is giving you more freedom Tilda. Eureka poured some tea. Enough about that. I am not a doll and that's it. Why would those seagulls bring me here? Maybe you know the answer, since you are not surprised by the amount of them. Once again, Yuriko chuckled. These children? They came here to save me. So did you. Why, I don't exactly remember us knowing of her existence. P, why are they saving you? Who knows Tilda? Why, so you don't need to be saved? Fine, cure an army. Let's drink and go home, we've got stuff to do. Yuriko's face didn't change. Not even a single muscle of her face has moved. K-H-M. Yuriko-san. Why would you think we will be helping you? Because I said so. I facepamed. We are not heroes who mindlessly jump into action. I do not remember asking for your consent. I shivered as the air in the room started cooling. It is not a metaphor since I actually started seeing my breath. What needs to be done? I have no idea how strong she is but if I suddenly encountered a ridiculously strong opponent, the wisest thing to do is to try talking. Indeed, doll. I see why these children followed you, and claimed you to be an asset. This island is often defiled by the pirates. I wish them to be taught a lesson. After you are done with them, I need you to avenge the traitor. Slay the one who burnt yourself. Easy, right Tilda? Yuriko stopped being dreadfully serious and returned to being an easy-going Anisan. No problem. Why would we? Patricia said simultaneously with me. Try me, child. I may be infirm but I can muster enough strength to remove both of you. I quickly closed Patricia's mouth with my hand, and smiled at Yuriko. Then, about the payment? I did a gamble here. She may be strong but she doesn't wish to do the things by herself. V3CH41. The night raid on Yuriko's island Yuriko agreed to answer some of our questions, if we help her. I didn't actually plan to have plain answers. I'd rather have something useful for a fight. Still, it is better to have something than nothing. It didn't look like Eureka would even try rewarding us. Patricia and I returned to the ship, and started waiting. Because I startled a group of people who came here, they might return with their friends. Will that woman be satisfied with just scaring those guys away? I shared Patricia's concerns but I also remember that the task is to teach them a lesson. It'll be alright. Let's wait. While Patricia was sleeping, she is useless. I was standing at the bow, and looking around, on the beach I saw a couple of crocodile-like creatures, the same kind that almost bit off my butt back then. I even felt hungry after looking at them. Since there is nothing else to do, I jumped off and headed to them with the katana in hands. Naya! With a brave war cry, I rushed at the crocodiles. I cut one of them in half, and the other one jumped away before I did the same with it. HSSSSS! Chomp as I rushed at it, I had my leg bitten by it. The metal plating saved me but I still lost some HP. I had to try hard to make the crocodile release my leg, and while it was busy, I hit it. Is this a monomolecular katana? I wondered what the hell is with sword, while I struggled to pull it out of the ground below the crocodile's cut in half head. During my little foraging expedition. A small group of ships sneaked towards the ship, and prepared to strike. I waited for the ships to do something but they only continued to approach, until they were literally 20 meters away from my board. Whoosh in a second, the ships lit up with small torches, and moments later, the torches were shot at the ship. Most of the fire arrows were extinguished immediately after hitting the steel and few of them hit the wooden deck. I didn't even bother with checking what is going on, and just continued gutting the corpses of our future meal. Whoosh one is done, the other one's in process. Whoosh yeah, keep trying, idiots. Whoosh I have no idea how many volley they fired by now. I finished gutting the second crocodile, and finally decided to deal with those foolish people. The 100mm guns turned at the ships, and I facepamed. They have not enough depression to aim at the small vessels. Sorry, 
Patricia, I summoned the rigging, and I swear, I heard a girl screaming as she fell into the cold water. Bang 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 a flash lit the coast, albeit for a second, and the first rounds scattered around the vessels. The ships immediately started or airing away, after being discovered. Bang 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 the second salvo hit three of them turning the ships into a scrap wood. The shells are a bit more powerful than I expected, as the ships raised their sails, and oared like crazy. I stepped on the water, and rushed after them. By this point, they have no chances of escaping. Bang 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 boo 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 bum I farmed shots, while the ship's quantity rapidly decreased. Finally, when one was remaining, I let it run away. By the time I unsummoned the rigging, and returned to the anchoring. The last ship was already lurking in the darkness, picking up the survivors. I deliberately turned on all of the navigation lights, to show where my ship is, and that I am not moving anywhere. Meanwhile, I found the wet mess in a nightgown, and pulled her out of the water. You are psycho, did you wish for me to die? Do you even have anything inside that head of yours? I once again was close to becoming deaf. After I brought Patricia back to a comfy warm room, she stopped shouting and was only grumbling and cursing me. I am sure tomorrow she will be cursing me even more, since I have a feeling that Eureka wanted to kill that huge sea dragon. The one that didn't give a f about me and my shells. Ding you received five copper coins, six silver coins, three gold coins. 320 upgrade points IJ and Kirin Army, DDL upgrade points, 60, torpedoes, 06, HP, 2129, high minus 100%, AU 17%, 502 nanometers, 5 single turrets, dual gun turrets, 0400, 19 dual torpedo mount, prototype oxygen, high explosive. Increase caliber, 0 100 improve mounts, 0 250 improve propulsion, 0 500. Hereby I swear that I either kill that thing, or die there. I doubt I will have enough fuel to retreat again. Four sisters no 25. The recent birthday preparations for the king were draining us of energy. Since we are on friendly terms with him, we ought to be attending out of courtesy. The past events we attended were easier, at least because New Jersey was helping us out. I wish Angel was here. I patted Big Sis' shoulder. We all suffer, expect for her. Our workload is twice as much as the usual party preparations. It is funny how New Jersey is both a creepy pervert and the most diligent of us. She is surely worthy of her title of the most decorated battleship. Still. I am the most famous. Stop standing there like an idiot. Help me carry the flowers. We yes, yes. The least befitting activity for there. Before I finished complaining, Whiskey pushed the stack of flowers we will be using to decorate the tables. This ain't fun. Nobody cares if you're having fun. And don't drag us through mud again. We ha. We returned to working and by the evening the final preparations were done. The plan is simple, and is always applied to the noble parties we attend. Usually the executor would be New Jersey but this time it'll be me. One causes a commotion, Iowa faints from embarrassment, and we all quickly retreat under this pretense. Big sis, are you prepared? Of course I am. I already prepared a bunch of horror movies to help myself faint. I couldn't help being confounded, since Big Sis is once again being herself, after my sisters stepped away for a moment. I quickly approached the king. Hey Tilda, how's it going? Miss Missouri, you don't plan to ask if that person will be allowed here? My queen is still having nightmares. Too bad Tilda. So, can we bring New Jersey Tilda? Don't even try, Miss Tilda. This time we are ready for any of your excuses. Neither of you will be able to avoid attending Tilda. The king's smile was terrifying. I it's not like. You will stay. Nothing, absolutely nothing, will be able to make either of you run away Tilda. The same evening we gathered in my room. Then we will resolve to plan Casablanca. Mo, you know what to do Tilda. 
Yeah, shall we bring her? We do whatever you can. I don't have to remind you how long those parties last. All right, sisters, let's do our best. Yeah, with the newly found resolve, we started preparing for the showdown in the huge hall of the palace. Hello Tilda. Hello, Sir Tilda. How are you Tilda? How's your family Tilda? Can we, please, hurry with the plan, wait for a bit, Mo? We are almost ready. Yeah, while we were talking, two large and heavy hands landed on my shoulders. End of block 4